Hey, what is up, you guys? So, we are back for a little more Master Duel today. This one's gonna be fun. We got a 128-man tournament where players will be competing for, this time, some more Master Duel sleeves, some more Master Duel hoodies, and also a Rescue Rabbit. Got all the prizes right here, including this. And, um, yeah, so it's gonna be fun. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cup. Konami is hosting this series of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel tournaments that are free to enter and give you some chances at winning some really, really cool prizes. So, uh, yeah, I think this is to be really fun. And we're just waiting a couple minutes for the first round to begin. I'll be doing a little bit of spectating as per usual. So, you guys can let me know, of course, how your days are going. What's up? It's going to be another fun day of watching duels. Um, we'll try to find some interesting duels today. I know yesterday we had a lot of a lot of snake eyes. I know people aren't always a big fan of uh, watching snake eyes all day long, right? You know, seeing the same deck over and over can get a little bit wearing. So, you know. Okay, so the first round is about to start. We're going to just go ahead and get going, I suppose. Kahanam TCG, Ducky 91. Okay, yeah, so these duels are, these duels are happening. Cool, okay. Yeah, so the way this works is we are just going to watch duels. This is uh, several rounds of Swiss with 128 different players. And, um, after a few rounds of Swiss, we will cut to top, I want to say it's top 8 or 16, I'm actually not sure this time. And, uh, those matches will be best 2 out of 3, but the first few matches we see will be, um, just best of 1s. And we're already starting off with something really cool. Lithosagem? I haven't seen this card played in, like, ages, man. Like, actual ages. So is this like a dinosaur? Tyranno Infinity. Wow, someone's actually playing like a, a real like Earth kind of dino thing. Unfortunately, they've run into Max C already, which maybe isn't the best start, but you know, I mean they gotta try. Still though, press one if you have if you are very refreshed to see a dinosaur deck today of all things. Oh, Puppy Tron, you're back. Yeah, I remember you were playing in this last week. So you are going to be playing again today, it sounds like. Am I taking questions? I mean, I can answer some questions. We'll be hanging out. I'll be trying to do commentary over these duels. I found that I'm not the best uh, at Yu-Gi-Oh! commentary, so I'm going to try my best to be a little bit more focused and improve whatever it is that I can bring to the table. Dinosaurs, I think, is going to be an interesting one. They're probably playing against Snake Eyes. I feel like that's just kind of the uh, the narrative in general, is that no matter what you're watching, you can rest assured that they're probably facing Snake Eyes. So, a lot of what we see today is going to come down to how well different decks can stack up against uh, the Snake Eye deck, really. At least I would assume that's kind of how it's going to go. Um, you know, it all, it all kind of depends. We might get a matchup where it's like heroes versus black wings, but I don't know how likely that is. Anyways, okay. <clears throat> so, while this is all happening... I'm actually sharing the stream online in other places as well. Oh man, thank goodness this guy made Dolka, sheesh. Oh, before the turn even ended, he had to deal with a Nibiru, but at least that's out of the hand. Now you only got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards 
to to deal with. Now, this is actually okay. This is one interesting thing already. Lithosa Gym did banish three cards from the extra deck. We can assume this is a Snake Eye deck because they got Promethean Princess, IP Mascarena, and Barone de Flor all banished. That's actually really that's an interesting start for a number of reasons. Like, think about it, right? That means that they're not going to be able to make Princess. They're not going to be able to make IP or Barone. So their Link Monster lineup is going to be surprisingly weaker. Like, you can still make stuff like um, Ambla Whale, but that's not really as good without Princess. You can still make Opelosa, but that'll be a little bit harder without IP. So at least you can't make it in the opponent's turn. You can still make it fairly easily. And Barone de Flor is just always a nice one to get rid of in general. Um, they will still have access to Link Kribo over the course of the game. So that gives me some pause. And, um, let's see, what else would be kind of deadly in the extra deck? Maybe Borlode Savage could pop up since Jet Synchron gets played so much. Hard to say. But, yeah, this should be interesting. Oh, yeah, by the way, guys, if you are just tuning into the stream, I know it's easy to forget to, but if you don't mind, drop a like uh, on the stream, just like you would in a normal video. It helps out a lot because it makes YouTube surface the video to more people. It's just a weird trick that I kind of picked up on live streams. If everybody just hits like on the stream at the same time, then we, um, magically, hmm, Cosmic Cyclone. Okay, I thought it was going to be like a battle trap. Yeah, then we magically get more, uh, more viewership. <laughs> so, yeah, please do that for sure. We have gotten as high as like 500 and some viewers on these, so that would be cool to have. We can all hang out and spend our Saturdays watching Yu-Gi-Oh! together. Okay, so he's going to use Diabellstar to swing over, um... Dolka. That's a pretty smart call, if you ask me. Because Dolka was otherwise going to stop, probably, Snake Eye Ash from activating. And, of course, that would not be good. I mean, we need Snake Eye Ash to search Poplar and kind of get things moving. So, still, though, that means that we're going to have to go to Main Phase 2. And so, in Main Phase 2... Like, Ducky won't lose the duel this turn, basically. I should probably start calling these duelists by their, like, usernames. Ducky versus Kahanam TCG. Yeah, see, Link Rebo is still in circulation. I wonder if, because we know that Ducky is going to survive another turn, I wonder if he can somehow summon another Lithosagem and get some four cards out of the extra deck. That would be really funny. I love the... I, I, I'm biased. I, I play Dogmatica. And so I'm super biased. I love the idea of, like, taking your opponent's extra deck cards, like, right out of their extra deck before they can summon them. It's a little mean, a little toxic. But the thing is, like, I mean, it's Snake Eye. I don't know that our sympathy is really, uh, abundant when it comes to this deck. I mean, plus you still have to deal with, like, Diabell Star and Flamberg Dragon going back and forth. They're both still really big monsters. They both can remove cards really easily off the field. Jeez, oh, see this thing being put in the back row just that bites. He must have many cards in his deck to have so many cards in his hand. Yes, yeah, Son Goku, he just resolved Max C, basically, on the last turn against Ducky. So, Kahanam resolved Max C on Ducky's first turn, got to draw several cards. That's how he has so many things in hand. Yeah, hey everybody. Happy uh, Saturday. Hope you're all enjoying your weekend. And I'm glad that you joined me for some Yu-Gi-Oh! today. This one's going to be another Master Duel Challenger Cup tournament. I should probably mention, if you want information on joining future Master Duel Challenger Cups, you can find all of it in the video description. I would tell you guys when the next one is, but I'm not entirely sure of the full schedule of it myself. These are technically like put on by Konami. So, um, the entire, like, kind of month schedule is not fully known to me. All I know are the dates when I will be doing them, and this is, um, one of mine, so. 
still, they'll always be hosted by different content creators. So you can, you know, typically just go to that Discord server and it'll show the full schedule or at least, you know, the next week's schedule. And that'll make it a lot easier to figure out which ones you want to join in. You'll give me just a moment. I'm actually going to uh, share this stream on, on the socials. Hence you going that will be probably going on soon. I'm gonna let other people know to join the stream. Okay. All right. Cool. Sorry. My bad. I uh, had to had to share some things uh, on the internet so people can know what's going on. All right. Back to the duel. Back to the duel. I'm focused now. I promise. Oh my god. I thought that those gym got rid of cards. How did Apollosa and Borload Savage end up in the field? Sheesh. Snake Eye really can't be put down, huh? Well, what started off as a pretty decent game for, for Ducky, uh, looks like it ends in a loss. Well, I, I turn back to the stream just as, uh, just as poor Ducky ends up having to surrender. But congratulations to Kahanam TCG. Took the W with Snake Eyes. Let's see if there are any other interesting matches that are happening right now. Hmm. We'll try. What's this? Roar Kalos versus Milk Bubble Tea? What match is this? I think the new rule for today, you guys can let me know if you agree with this rule, is like, if, um, if we see two Snake Eyes decks, I think we just automatically, like, not... Oh! Okay, it's on Snake Eyes. It's an Avalon, Rika's an Avalon, against Labyrinth. Not going super well for the Labyrinth deck. Like at all. How do they lose all these cards? Sheesh, what, what is going on here? Yeah. 
Do I still play Rika? Um, every now and again. <clears throat> I still have it built. I don't play, like, Rika on Avalon. I just like playing pure Rika, of course. What up, Paul? How's it going, Matthew? Oh, man. Mark Stevenson, did you see my super chat? Oh, you love the super chat? I do see it. What's up? Recently made a Rescue Ace Snake Eye deck. Love the content. Yeah, Rescue Ace Snake Eye. Deadly, deadly deck. I, uh, I hope that Rescue Ace get their new cards in Master Duel soon. What's that? Emergency and, uh... What's the name of the, the big monster? I forget his name, but the one that flips things face down. Yeah, hopefully those both show up soon. I want them. Will you be watching WrestleMania today? Uh, my friend Victor was telling me about it. I probably won't myself. I don't usually watch wrestling. He does. Larry will probably be. Larry likes wrestling. Is it bad I'm still playing tier elements or tier elements? All right, chat. Tier elements or tier elements? What is it? I, I know most people say tier elements, but I, I'm a weirdo and I say tier elements. But I'm starting to realize it's probably just tier elements. Anyway, okay. Yeah, uh, is it bad that you're still playing tier elements? No, definitely not. I mean, I think the tier elements, at least like in Master Duel right now, is still like a playable deck. And also, it's, um. It's like more viable than people think it's expressive i think it's a deck that does take a little bit of skill and um wit to pilot because you know you're not always getting the same mills so i think that kind of makes it exciting each duel feels a little bit different and nothing wrong with playing a deck if you still enjoy it i'd say it's not as repetitive that's probably a good way to put put it tier limits aren't as repetitive Okay, yeah, it definitely sounds like people are... It's tier limits for most people. Oh, yeah, all right. Well, that's going to be a scoop from Roar Kalos. They surrendered, so Milk Bubble Tea wins with Rika. Rika Sun Avalon. Exciting. Let's check these in-room replays. We might be able to find something to watch. I think the first round um, will have ended here in just a moment. Because these rounds are 20 minutes, so... Yeah. Okay. What's happening? We watch these two. I have this in this Discord server, people are able to kind of um talk about like matches. They can give me recommendations for matches to watch that are going on in this tournament cuz it's a big 128 man tournament and I obviously can't know everybody who's in it and every deck they're playing. So, if they give me good suggestions, that's what I'll try to watch. Just that, uh... Just that they haven't told me any yet. So, for now... We'll just hop into a replay. I want to keep the duels going. I know people don't like it when you're just sitting around. And menus, it's all about watching duels. Has anyone else noticed this ice field has been a lot more popular lately? I feel like I've just seen it more. Oh, these decks seem cool. Evil Twin Sprite versus Spiral? Looks like Spiral with a Diabell Star engine. I mean, I saw Master Plan get pitched to grave anyway, so probably Spiral. Snake Eye Spiral. Of course, it can never just be Spiral. So, we gotta get through the Snake Eye part first before we see anything super novel. Oh, Hexlex is in this tournament. 
Snake... Okay, wait. So they were saying blue versus snake eyes? So somebody did blue versus snake eyes? I want to see that. Do you guys want to see Fluanderies versus snake eyes? Press 1 if you want to see Fluanderies versus snake eyes. If you guys do, we can definitely go watch that. While, um... It's a match. It's a matchup. I think that just ended. Let's see what people have to say. Okay, people want to see it. All right, yeah, let's watch it. We'll end this replay real quick. Okay, so I've got the table number. Table number was 63 against Hexlex. Enter a room. I don't know if that's... Wait. Sorry, I, I gotta find the, uh... Okay, that did not work. Wait. I'm trying to find the right table and, like, room and stuff to watch this replay. Okay, well, I guess I can't watch this one, but, um... Here's something. Okay, there's an in okay, here's an interesting match. I'm not going to spoil what this is, but apparently this is also a really good match. And I'm, I'm curious to see if it actually is um this is a deck that everybody memes on a lot. So it's not uh Fluandries versus versus uh Snake Eye, but it's actually Kashtira versus Tistina. I've literally never seen the Tistina deck get played at all. So, I gotta track what's even going on. This field spell seems so hard to use. Send it to Tina Monster from deck to grave, but then if only if your opponent controls three or more face-up cards, you can summon Crystal God to Tina from... from the deck. Okay. Wait, Armored Xyz? Anybody in chat who understands Tina, please explain. I, I know Alec plays the just the full armored Xyz deck, but he plays it with like sharks. So this is all very new to me. What do you leave on the field? The Scarn versus Whitehead. Um, did he use some of this? Oh well, okay. I was trying to read it. It's gone. Full armored Dark Ray Lancer. Okay, let's pause. What does this do? Once per turn, you can also Xyz summon this thing. Gains 300 attack for each material it has. Once per turn, you can target an Xyz card in your grave at your hand. Okay. So if an equipped card becomes equipped to this, then they can also attach one monster their opponent controls this card's material. Okay, cool. Ah, so they use the trap, equip a card from grave, and that automatically equips the Cashier Unicorn. But a second Cashier Unicorn gets summoned, so... Maybe not the biggest deal. Wanted gets Diabell Star. Caster a Birth. Oh, it can normal summon Diabell Star without tributing. I always forget about that. Alright, Sinful Spoils of Subversion puts her in the back row. Can this be targeted? I have a feeling maybe this can't be targeted or something. Is that like the effect this gets? Yeah, okay, it couldn't be targeted by, um, Sinful Spoils of Subversion. Wow, that's crazy. Ash on Castier Theosis, Unicorn takes a card. Don't get to see what it is, but...
Oh, jeez. Man, I thought the Tistina deck was going to show us something good here. They try to use the field spell. Zeus is going to send everything. Oh, man. This... Uh, uh, I, oh, this is sad. Another in-phase Zeus. Well... Okay, I thought this was going to be a Tistina W. Like a win. Not apparently. What does this do? Does this get to summon itself or something? Oh, okay. Yeah, this doesn't... Oh, put him out of their misery. Just attack. Well... Okay, I have to apologize, everybody. I thought that was going to be a, a more uh, exciting duel than it was. Um, but not the case. <laughs> oh, man. I was, I, I was, I was, I'm a little disappointed. I, I wanted to see Tostina manage to, manage to take a, a win. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe Tostina can get it up somewhere. I just not. Not here, apparently. Sheesh. 55064. Tier element versus Snake Eye? Ho? Oh. Someone has informed me that that might be a good one. Let me see if I can find the replay. Okay. So apparently, there's a Tier element versus Snake Eye match. That was uh, really good, so I'm going to check that out. Oh, yeah, by the way, guys, if you're first tuning into the stream here, we're watching the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel United States Challenger Cup. Thanks for joining me. If you don't mind, drop a like on the stream. It helps out a lot. We only have 79 likes. If we can get to 100, that would be really cool. The more people who like it, the more YouTube shows the stream to others. So that'll help the stream grow and we can get more people around. Anyways, the way this works is that we've got 128 different people today who are all competing at a chance for some really cool prizes like this. I'll just show them real fast. And, um, yeah, we're going to be watching and spectating their games, doing a little bit of commentary, something I'm only okay at. And if you guys want information on how you can join these Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cups that Konami's hosting every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, all you got to do is join the Discord that is linked in the description of the stream, and that's where you can get all the info about signing up and stuff. Cool. Okay, so let's catch up on what's actually going on here. Grass. Sent a lot of cards. Jeez, that's a lot of cards. I can't even keep up. Okay, so tier limits Kashtira, Meta Noise. What was that? Heartbeat? Yeah, okay. Sheeran does a fusion summon. To roll Kalos. Jeez, this deck's got so much grave stuff. It feels like the hardest thing to keep up with. Oh, hey, Callie. How's it going? Callie is in chat, guys. You can say hi to your favorite. Oh, what are they saying in production here? I saw the next round. Okay, round, the next round starting in a few minutes. So we have time to finish this. Should have enough time to finish this. This will also tell me what notable players might be playing in today's event. MBT was playing yesterday, so that was pretty cool. Jeff Leonard's playing again today? Oh, I recognize Yatsumugi. They, uh, they played in at least the first event. Hexlex is playing. MBT is, in fact, in today's tournament as well. So we'll have to catch some of all of those games. When did I first get into Yu-Gi-Oh? I started playing in 2002, right after I watched the show on TV. So I'm not particularly, uh... Not particularly, like different or special in that regard but um yeah that's that's basically it i started playing in 2002 now i did stop maybe in 2000 let's say four or five something like that 
and then I got back into the game in 2008. So, uh, eight? Yeah, 2008. Late 2008, 2009, something like that. And since then, I've basically played full time. A bit of a long story. Storm the Wolf. May I have a shout out? I guess this is a shout out here, if you consider it. Shout out Storm the Wolf. Storm the Wolf, or like Storm the Wolf? Like, are you storming a wolf, or are you a wolf named Storm? Just a, uh. Just a question. So, so here's the thing I didn't realize. When this person told me that this was Snake Eye versus uh, Tear Lament, I thought it was like Snake Eye versus Tear Lament, but it turns out this is Snake Eye Tear Lament versus, I think, just Tear Lament? How do people keep up with these matches? Like, I'm I'm always so lost when I watch, like, decks like Tear play. I'm just, am I, like, too much of casual trash to process what's going on? This stuff just goes completely over my head. Someone who's versed in these things, please explain. How does Tier Limit, like, how do you manage this? this? The mental stack seems unbearable. Not in like a bad way, but... Tier Mirrors are so interesting, Callie says. Yeah, I think they're interesting for sure. I just, I barely know what's going on. Like, in a good way, it's exciting. You just play until you get used to the deck? Okay. Maybe I should play Tier Limit myself. I mean, it seems fun. I'd have to craft all the cards I need for it. That's a few URs, but, you know. Yeah, Callie, you gotta join one of these Master Duel Challenger Cups when yourself a Rescue Rabbit or two, or a hoodie, or sleeves, whatever else it is. There's also a jacket, that's the other thing. You can win a jacket, a Master Duel jacket. Okay, well, yeah, that ended. Of course, Snake Eye tier beats regular tier. I guess I shouldn't be super surprised by that. Cool, congrats to Knife Hacks. All right, so the next the next uh, round is starting. So I got to run to it. 407619. Spectator ID. Okay, so I've been informed that Jeffrey Leonard is playing in this tournament. And MBT is also playing in this tournament. So, if you guys want, maybe we can find their matches. Uh, ones in chat. Let me know. If you want. One for Jeff Leonard, two for MBT. Who do you guys want to watch? Jeff Leonard is probably playing... Playing, um... Stun. MBT, maybe he's just playing Snake Eye. Okay. 976-366. Okay. Somebody just informed me that that's the room I need to go to. All right, here we go. Sounds like people want to watch Jeff, so we're going to watch it. Sam D. Pogger versus Jeff Leonard. Here we go. So, um, Jeff Leonard, for those of you guys who don't know... Uh, is infamous for playing decks like Mystic Mine, Exodia, Stun. We watched him yesterday using a uh, Barrier Statue Stun deck. We'll see if he's using the same thing today. I suspect as much, but he might have changed his deck since yesterday. He's playing against Sam, who starts off with a Hero Lives, summons out Stratos, grabs Vision Hero Ferris. You think, oh, Jeff Leonard's on Snake Eyes today? 
really? There's no way. I feel like Jeff Leonard's just, he, he's like a, the stun guy. I feel like he wouldn't play Snake Eye, right? If he is, that's, that's cool, but like, sheesh. Oh man, DPE getting summoned is like already really scary. If you're playing like a stun deck at least. Cards like DPE feel like the, uh, the arch enemy of a stun strategy. Yeah, I don't think Jeff will betray us like that. Nah. My money's on stun. I always wonder what, like, Jeff Leonard thinks of it's these crazy modern decks that, like, summon a billion times. Because, I mean, usually, like, his decks are, like, summoning, like, once. Sam D. Pogger. Uh, I've seen this name, I think, in all the tournaments so far. Not like a Team Samurai X1 Sam, but I guess it's another Sam. Naruto Usumaki? You don't know what Snake Eyes is? Hmm, you must be new here. Don't worry, you'll get plenty familiar with it today. Ooh, Infernal Rage. Don't always see that get summoned. You're gonna learn today. Yeah, we, we're, we'll be seeing we'll be seeing a couple snake eye decks. Weren't you doubting a hero line earlier? I don't know what you're talking about. Trucks. You have to tell me what you mean. Jeez, it's still going. I, I just want to see what Jeff is playing. Sheesh. Oh, you know, I know why this is taking a while, because we've actually caught up to the duel in real time, so we're not getting the fast-forwarded replay. You said we could see Heroes vs. Black Wings, but it's unlikely. Yeah, I don't think we're seeing Heroes vs. Black Wings, but maybe we'll see something close today. We'll get Heroes vs. Stun or something like that. <laughs> He's so locked into the game, his turn hasn't taken long enough. I like that. That's a good that's a good way to think about it. Someone says, Great! Jeff is back with his stun toxicity. Alright, are we gonna start this debate up again today? What's more toxic? Um rapid 10 minute combo or um or stun where your opponent, I guess, also doesn't play? Which do you guys think is better or worse? In fact, a little poll. Start a poll. Which deck is worse? Combo. Stun. And you guys can tell me. We can get to the bottom of this. Alright, I made a poll. You guys can vote. You decide. I expect stun to win because I feel like most people don't like the idea that stun is locking them out of the game, but... I'm sure that both have their dissenters. Okay, so Jeff starts with Pot of Duality. Gets hit with Ash Blossom. Always a little painful, but not the worst. I mean, I think that... Well, he would have had to play Extravagance first if he had it. But I was going to say, Extravagance getting Ashed always hurts a little more than Duality getting Ashed. But starting with Duality tells us a pretty good idea of... Uh, what Jeff is playing. You underestimate how many stun players are in your audience? No, I, I trust me, I know. I think um, the more casual the audience, much like ours, the more likely stun would be to uh, to to lose a... I mean, well, so the, the poll is which deck is worse. And people are saying stun is, like, worse. 
I probably should have worded that better. It's like, which deck is worse to play against? Not like worse as in maybe competitive viability. So, so there's that. But either way, I think people understood the question. Oh man, Jeff, Jeff loses this one. He doesn't even play a card. Come on, man. That sucks. No, I, I get it. I mean, Duality got ashed, and from what I saw yesterday, if he's running anything remotely similar to what he played yesterday, uh, it's probably a... It's probably, like, got a lot of barrier statues and stuff. And we saw yesterday, actually, that that ended up kind of causing some bricky hands for him yesterday as well. Three nine zero five five seven. Okay. Let's have a quick look. Okay, so apparently there's a pretty good match going on here. Oh, this is Puptron. I recognize him. All right, Suzaka versus Puptron. Not gonna spoil what decks these two players are using, but I hear it's something pretty, pretty cool. One might just be Snake Eye, though. We're like the Judge Sleeves, I approve. People choose stun because they hate the concept of running back row hate. Yeah, I mean, I have noticed a lot of players these days feel like they are more opposed to running, like, back row removal cards because those cards don't allow them to combo. And so, like, if you have to run back removal to deal with floodgates, it, it reminds me of, like, the Mystic Mind days. All right, you heading out, Kelly? That's okay. Thanks for tuning in. It was awesome. Glad you stopped by. I'll be here. I'll be watching. I'll be master dueling. Master watching. Maybe not master dueling. I mean, I'm not in the tournament. I'm just watching the tournament. Anyways, bye, Kelly. Yeah, back removal doesn't do enough against combo, so it feels bad to run. I mean, I think that's a kind of... So, I have, like, a, a, a hot take about, um... Wait, why is my background green? I can change the color. Do you guys have a color you want the background to be? I'm, I'm doing green right now, but, like, I can... I can change colors. Yeah, but, anyways, what was I saying? So... Purple, red... Blue. Change it to rainbow. I mean, I, I would if I could. I can't really do that. Yeah, but what I was saying was, like, regarding the whole stun versus combos, like, you know, having to run back run stuff, I sometimes think that people uh, don't like the idea of, like, having to run cards that beat cards that beat them, if that makes sense. It's kind of a weird thing. Because, like, if you think about it, if you're, like, losing to stun decks, then you should run spell and trap removal to get rid of their floodgates. But running spell and trap removal is not as good against combo decks. And so, like, therein, to me, lies sort of, like, a sort of, like, beautiful dichotomy where you have to pick what you want to, like, prioritize more. Do you want to prioritize being able to, like, play against a combo deck or play against a stun deck? And, like, then the side deck kind of factors in. And I like that kind of decision-making in Yu-Gi-Oh! But I can... I see why some people maybe would prefer their path to victory be predictable and streamlined. Anyways, uh, super chat from Dr. JB. A, a combo deck that takes 10 minutes to build a board that prevents their opponent from playing is basically stunned, but you had to watch them play with themselves first. Okay, so that's Dr. JB's stance. How do you guys feel about that? Alright, I set up a poll. You guys can vote for the background light color. People clearly don't like green. A lot of people are saying red for some reason. 
Purple always seemed like such a twitch color. I should probably watch the duel, shouldn't I? Alright, uh, Suzaka made a really big board. This is just typical Snake Eye stuff, huh? Ah, okay, Puptron's playing Thunder Dragons. Thunder Dragon's a fun one. We don't get to see that too often. Thunder Dragon Branded? Or Bestial? Something. Okay, so in the color poll right now, people are saying that the background color should be blue. I do remember you, Son Goku. You were here yesterday. I'd rather get beat by a combo deck that takes brain power to use, unlike stun, where you just play floodgates and wait for them to surrender. Hmm. I think stun can be a little harder to play than just uh, setting floodgates, but it all depends. Oh my god, Nibiru. Ouch. Ouch. Oh, F's in chat. Man, that's... It feels like Nibiru... It's always Nibiru, man. It's always Nibiru just running the fun. Yeah, Snake Eye can come back from this pretty easy. Big token? Yeah, I mean, that's one cool thing about Nibiru is you get a big token. The only problem is, like, with Snake Eye, dealing with a big token is nothing. I mean, like, you can always recycle and search um, sinful spoils of subversion and stuff like that. I see. Wait, 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 wait. Does subversion work on tokens? Surely not, right? Does it? I've never seen that. I was sitting here thinking like, oh, you can just out it with the with that, but someone can answer that for me. I don't actually know if that works. It does? Okay, well, that's a shame. I mean, it's cool, but kind of a shame. I was gonna be like, oh, maybe like tokens can't be affected by it, but... Okay, well, today I learned... And there it is, Sinful Spoils of Subversion. Which will probably be getting used here shortly. I guess I could have just uh, shut up and watched and I would have learned. I feel so bad for Puptron. It's like so cool to see Thunder Dragons play, but then so sad to see them like get hit by, you know, an Abiru or something like that. Oh, okay, we didn't even have to watch the token get put in the background. Just got popped. Yeah, I'd imagine if you bring the token back, it wouldn't have any properties anymore. Like, no attack or defense or whatever. Oh, man. Snake Eyes always finds a way, huh? Okay, I've got a, like a, a legitimate question. First, let me change the background color. Blue one, so uh, this is blue, right? Let me see. What is this a good color blue in the camera? Yeah, okay, this is a good color blue. Yeah, you guys wanted blue, so blue is the color you get. Anyway, I've got a question, like serious question for you guys about um, like your opinions on Snake Eye as a deck. Do you, okay, what do you guys feel is, like, the core of what makes Snake Eyes so good or, like, annoying to play? Is it the consistency? Is it the recursion? Is it just the, like, general kind of ceiling? I mean, I guess it's, like, obviously, like, a, a mix of those things, right? Like, I'm not, you know, assuming that's, like, literally one, but, like, what do you think is the most powerful element of it? What, as you watch these matches... What what feels like the uh you know 
the problem with Snake Eye. All right, I'm gonna read what some people are saying. That it keeps playing through anything. The fact they have one card starters, they never go away. It can do so much in your own turn. Everything floats. If you break their board, they just come back with a single card. They have the same generic negate boss monsters that are problematic in every single deck. Its ability to come back, recursion, generic inboard, insane follow up. Okay, so yeah, I I agree with all of you. I think that as I have watched more Snake Eye decks be played in this last week or so um, than I have for like one sec. <laughs> um anyways what was i saying yeah I, I think that so regarding snake eye what makes it so good i think it's the recursion i think that this deck would really could could afford to lose some of the um ability to come back so quickly and recur so quickly and i think that the three cards that really actually stand out to me as like the recursive problem is this thing Divine Temple, this thing, Poplar, and this thing, Flamberg. It's this combination of these three cards. I think it has very little to do with Diabell Star, and in some cases, it's not even like Promethean Princess. It's just the fact that these cards can function on like both turns. All of these cards, like just they, you know, Poplar can like add to hand, summon, summon, search, send, and then like comes back, and like they can do that in the opponent's turn. And so then, like when this is grabbing back like a poplar in the opponent's turn and it's searching and doing all it's like these three cards to me form the kind of crux of the recursion problem and interestingly enough i i don't know that like i'm saying any of this stuff has to get banned per se but like they do each play a really important role like it feels like divine temple is what allows them to play through like specifically nibiru really easily and then flamberg and poplar just they're flamberg and poplar you kind of get it so, uh, I, I don't know, like, how I would necessarily hit the deck, but I think that those would be some of the cards I'd be looking at first. I totally see, you know, Promethean Princess as, like, an issue in her own way and all that, but it's mostly, like, Poplar and, and Flamberg that feel like they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Poplar is just it's such a polarizing card. Because I think that if it was gone completely, this deck just kind of wouldn't function, really. It, not as, like, a top-tier thing. But then, like, with it around, it just gets so insane. And then you got, like, all the other extra stuff on the side. The Link Karibo. Like, you know, Princess. The, the slowly floating Diabell Star engine where, like, Wanted is just floating and recycling every turn. Diabell starts floating and recycling every turn. But to me, they're not nearly as rough as like Poplar and Flamberg. I M H O. So, if you, chat, were in charge of restricting the power of this deck, what card or cards would you hit and how? That's the question of the day that I would like to hear your opinions on. Hey, Paul, what is meta decks? What do you mean? Like, what, what are meta decks, or what are the current meta decks? Some people say Flamberg to one. Ban original sinful spoils. That cuts off eight starts in the deck. Mm -hmm. Just ban Temple and things will be fine. A lot of different ideas I'm hearing in chat. If I had to say, well, hmm, Grand Harrier, I'd attack the extra deck. I recognize Grand Harrier. You stream Duel Links, am I right? But, um, remove the power cards and go into, like, Barone, Opelosa, Ivy Mascarena. Yeah, people have been begging for those cards for a little while. 
Konami seems a little bit... They think differently. Anywho. Oh, this, the fact that this duel is still going on is interesting. It is live. I thought this was like a replay and that it would end sooner, but no, okay. Just banning original cuts off Diabell Stars to starter while still letting Snake Eyes play themselves. So you're saying uh, maybe original simple spoils should be banned. I'm I'm torn. I think that like for me, Poplar and or Flambird feel like the most annoying parts of this deck. And I would love to see both of them go to like one or something. And I don't think that original simple spoils would ever get banned. I have a hard time seeing it being banned. Because like it's kind of it feels like yeah, as Grand Harrier said, they won't ban original because it's the bridge. Yeah, like, I think Original Simple Spoils feels like it's supposed to be the card that ties Diabell Star to the Snake Eye cards. And so, like, in that way, it would kind of kill the lore to, to hit it. Which, I, I know that sounds like a silly excuse. I mean, we're kind of focused on game balance here and not the stories of the cards. But it just seems like something that might go against the core design principles at play. So yeah, I don't think that Diabell Star and Original Simple Spoils would be the targets. I think that Flamberg and Poplar, though, those would be those would be my hits. If it was up to me, I got a oh, I need I got a request for you guys. It seems like the viewership of the stream has actually been going up a little bit over time. If you guys don't mind, if you're enjoying the stream, drop a like on it. Just a simple thumbs up works really well. It uh, it helps because on YouTube, if somebody likes the stream, like while it's live, if you guys all like it at the same time, it surfaces it out to a lot more people. It's a weird hack. Don't ask me why it works that way. It just does. You can use it on your own live streams as well. But yeah, if everybody who's watching could just like the stream... Uh, that would help. Maybe we can get to 300 viewers. It'd be cool. We got as many as like 500 and something on the first day. That was fun. And Suzaka did win. Snake Eye will out. Even against a deck like Thunder King. Not Thunder King's. Thunder Dragons. Which has its fair share of recursion already. Just liked. Sweet. Thank you so much, guys. Much, 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 much appreciation from me. I think, speaking of... Oh, nine two. Okay, there's another, another room with another interesting match. I see. I've been informed that there's another interesting match going on. I promise, guys, I'm going to try my hardest to avoid showing you all Snake Eye Dittos for as long as I can. Once we get in top cut, though, I can't make any promises. But you know, I will try. I will be your champion and keep you away from the Snake Eyes matches. Or my name isn't. Okay, so this is Labyrinth, Unchained Labyrinth, or Labyrinth with a little Unchained, versus Mikonko. Okay. Ooh, this seems like a hard time for Mikonko. I think Mikonko does pretty well at countering like combo decks, but control stuff like Lab seems to be its weakness. Achilles heel. Five Ds was peak Yu-Gi-Oh. Hmm. Was five Ds peak Yu-Gi-Oh? You guys tell me. Grand Harrier. I felt that in my soul. Casting duel links during Tachyon meta was pain. You guys do what you can and realize people are also here to just chill and vibe. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's what I'm going to kind of try to do whenever I'm um, uh, hosting these Master Duel Challenger Cups. Like, I really, I know that, like, people don't want to watch Snake Eyes all day. I don't want to watch Snake Eyes all day. If we can avoid watching Snake Eyes all day, we will avoid watching Snake Eyes all day. It gets tough because in Top Cut, that's just all we're going to see, but I will try. Oh. I thought this was going to be like, Makonko was going to put up a fight, but Labyrinth just... Okay, well. Cool, congrats to Safgod. I think the next round should be starting soon.
see what's going on here. Okay, this room got disbanded, so... I'll go back to my main spectating room. For the start of the next round. Yeah, okay, next round is beginning. Looks like everybody's lining up at the tables. So right now, this this tournament um, has already started. It's a 128-man tournament. This is the Master Duel Challenger Cup. Um, if you're just tuning in, you kind of need to know. Basically, these are tournaments that Konami is hosting every weekend on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And you can enter for free and have a chance to win some really cool prizes. The larger the tournament, the better the prizes. So like yesterday was a 64-man tournament, but today is going to be 128. And I think tomorrow is going to be a 256-player one. But that will not be hosted by me. That's actually going to be on Kriparian's channel, the Hearthstone tuber, I believe. So, yeah, I hosted a 256-man tournament last weekend, though. So, yeah, you can win some cool stuff like this. Really awesome Master Duel hoodie, Rescue Rabbit plush, it's cute, and even some Master Duel sleeves, which are like real life, got some right here, like they're like real life sleeves, so come in black and white. So yeah, lots of cool stuff up for grabs. If you want information about how to sign up, you can just go to the Discord that's linked in the description and um, get all the information to sign up to the future ones. I know a lot of people really, really love these rescue rabbits in particular, so. The sleeves are really cool as well. But yeah, so that's the information on the Challenger Cup. Anyways, if you're new to the stream, welcome. Hey, we're just gonna be watching and spectating a lot of different matches. My goal is to show you guys some cool, interesting duels, rogue matches if possible. I've got a Discord server that I'm in, like, where they're hosting a tournament, and they kind of tell me if there's, like, an interesting match that I should maybe keep my eyes out on. So, um, we'll try to watch that stuff as well. Um, anything else I'm forgetting? Like the stream, by the way. If you are watching and just lurking, you know, watch the stream, say hi. You don't have to chat regularly, but, you know, just saying hi is always cool. Just want to know you're there. That you exist. That I'm seen. I'm not sad, I promise. I'm not lonely. Or trapped here. Uh, okay. So, the next round is starting. I think this is round three. So, I guess let's just hop in and see if maybe we can find a cool match to watch. We know Suzaka's running fire. Not Is running fire, Snake Eye. Um, that Bell Star fire, not Fire Kings. What's at table two? We'll take a risk. Maybe it'll be something neat. But if I type in the chat, I won't be a lurker anymore. That is a good point. You are right, but... Oh, jeez, I see wanted sleeves and judge sleeves. Ooh, unchained. It's different. We'll watch it. So, McIsle versus Apotheo. McIsle is using Unchained, and I'm going to assume this is Diabell Star, but maybe I shouldn't assume. You know what they say about assumptions. Thank you, Eric Jordan, for the super chat. Are the Duelist participants also streaming? People are allowed to stream. So if you're playing in the tournament, you are allowed to stream it um, on like your YouTube or Twitch channel. So some people who are in this tournament might be streaming it. Like I'm assuming maybe MBT is streaming his run. But, uh, it just depends. I can actually check the... I can actually check the rounds. Uh, and I can see how certain people are doing. Like, I know the MBT is in this tournament. Looks like currently he is at table 30. So... Not maybe doing super duper well. 
I can see the standings too as of as of round two anyway. We'll try to watch MBT next. I think people would want to see that. I would assume. Press 1 if you want to watch uh, MBT duel in this tournament. Okay, let's get back to answering you guys' questions. Thank you, Richard. Been an APS fan since the very beginning. I appreciate that. Okay, MBT is not streaming, so he must be trying to actually focus and really like do his best. Understandable. It's hard to play Master Duel and stream, which is something that a lot of people I've noticed like sometimes people are like, oh like stream, you know, these like tournament runs or stream, you know, laddering. And that can be kind of difficult. It's hard to focus on Yu-Gi-Oh while uh entertaining a chat. Am I still master on the ladder? I got to master rank last season. I have not gotten it in the April season, but it just started, so. I'll have to get in some time. Been very busy this week between doing these events and some other videos I'm working on. Yeah, it can be tough to find time to play the Master Duel myself. Anywho. Alright, so what are people saying? Do you agree with the take that heroes are an anti-meta deck right now? I suppose they're like anti-meta in the sense that you... I look tired. Thanks, I am. Um, you, It tries to go second. So I guess that's kind of anti-meta. Chat, is heroes an anti-meta deck right now? Like, I don't know if I'd call it anti-meta. I just think it's a going second deck. Not to say that they're bad, but I just, I'm not sure that they're anti-meta in the definition that I would use. Yeah, what Grand Harrier said. It's kind of it's a rogue deck. It's uh, it's got a decent win condition, but you know, not really like anti in the sense that it's not like specifically countering any strong meta trends. Um, I suppose, like, if you go first, you try to, like, do Dark Law Plasma and sort of see where that takes you. And if you go second, you just kind of try to go in for an OTK. Nerd or Rogati? Um, I know it's Rogue, but I heard that Dark Law basically made it anti-meta to Snake Eyes in particular. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess so. Like, if you can get Dark Law out, that's pretty good against Snake Eye. Now, there are outs to it, but yeah. Hi from Japan, it's 3 a.m. Oh, wow. JB, are you from Japan? What are you doing there? 3 a.m., man. That's a good, so that's a question actually for you guys in chat. Um, if anybody wants to chime in on this, what makes a deck rogue kind of versus anti-meta? Like what defines these distinctions, defines these labels? Because like we were talking about heroes, and we were sort of saying how like, oh yeah, you know, heroes is a uh, anti-meta deck, but I don't really think it's an anti-meta deck. I think it's just a reasonably viable rogue deck. Love thy enemies. It says, Rogue can top events, but not consistently. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's a characteristic of it, for sure. Trop says, Anti-Meta would be something that is created specifically to counter the top tier. Rogue, I would argue, is a deck that exists regardless of what's in the meta. I can get with that. Sounds about right. 
Anti-meta is practically a tier. Rogue decks are off the radar, aka you can expect an anti-meta deck, but rogue is the deck you don't prepare for. Hmm. Yeah, that... Okay. So I didn't notice actually with this duel, but um, Nightmare Griffin <laughs> is kind of shutting down this Snake Eye deck because um, Special Summon monsters can't activate their effects unless they're linked. And uh, yeah, it's so like Snake Eye Ash and all that stuff like can work if it's normal summoned. But other than that, stuff like Diabell Star is not really going to be able to use the effect. And I think that that has already taken the Snake Eye player, Apotheo, by surprise. Man, Wave High King Caesar hasn't even had to use its effect. That's harsh. Like, Divine Temple can summon Oak, but, like, I guess it has to summon here if it wants to use its effect, huh? Oh, see, it can't even use its effect now. Sheesh. No spite. But our sympathy for Snake Eye players is limited in this stream. So... No, I mean, I, I do, I have to say, though, the Griffin lock can be pretty nasty if you don't know what's going on. And maybe Apothea just hadn't fully caught on. I'm never calling Blue Eyes a rogue deck. This is from Love Thy Enemies. You're lying to yourself if you think that. Yeah, is Blue Eyes a rogue deck, chat? I, I have a hard time calling it a rogue deck. I don't know if, uh... I'd call Blue Eyes Rogue. I, just, I think Blue Eyes is too unreliable and sadly bricky to really be doing too much uh, in the Rogue category. Hmm. The nicest thing I can say about Blue Eyes is that, like, it is a fun anime deck. That's the best you can say. <laughs> no offense to the Blue Eyes players, of course. Paul, what do you think will be the next meta deck mechanic that Konami will make? The next meta deck mechanic? Don't know, but I hope that we get a cool water archetype, or maybe Atlantean support, that kind of gets to function in opposition to the recent Fire King support. I think that thematically that would be a fun sort of back and forth for the game to have. Like, I enjoy those sorts of... Uh, what would you call them? Like, larger overarching game metaphors or design things like fire versus water, light versus dark. Maybe somebody has a better name for that. Remember those old Mermel Atlantean days? Jesus, it's been a long time. It really has. I loved the Mermel Atlantean days. Mermel Atlantean and like Fire Fist, like 20, kind of late 2012, 2013, um, even early 2014. Man, good times. Good, good times. Press one if you remember Mermel format. Like just, just that whole era in Yu Gi Oh! That was um, kind of late in the Zexel era, and it was so, so, so much fun. I had a great time with that. Great, great, great time with that. I like playing Fire Fists. I like playing Mermails. The, t the two decks felt fairly evenly matched in terms of, like, representation and, um, viability. Man, I would love to see Atlantean support. I really would. I started playing last week? Wait. Ner Nerdergati. I don't know how to say it, but... You started playing, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! last week? Are you that new? Awesome, if so. But... It's, it's so it's so, it's so so crazy, like, when I hear that, like, somebody started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! like, last week. That's awesome. It, it's, like, weird to process, because I've played Yu-Gi-Oh! for, like, literally... Basically my whole life, it feels like, so... Anyways, we're hopping into a game that appears to be a Vsys deck tier, visus, thing, pile, against tier, 
Snake Eye? Or tier uh, Bell Star, at least. Probably Snake Eye. At least I'm not making you watch Snake Eye Dittos. You guys be grateful. Yeah, you played forever. It, it feels weird. Like, if you played Yu Gi Oh! like as long as I have, it's actually. Like, it sometimes starts to run together. You have, like, little highlight moments that felt really good in the game. Like, Mermails for me is one of them. Toss format. But then there are other times where I'm just like, man, I don't even remember the, some certain isolated points in Yu Gi Oh! that just went, like, it was like a blur. I definitely think Scary One can make this comeback, eh, guys? For sure. My 10-year-old's getting into Yu-Gi-Oh! He has a Slifer deck? Hmm. Khan asks, have you ever topped a major deck? And if so, which, what deck was it? Have I, like, topped a Yu-Gi-Oh! event? I've topped a regional a couple of times. It's the best I've done. I'm nothing to write home about. Yeah, I topped a regional. What did I top? Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. What did I top a regional with? Uh... I topped with Cyber Dragons and, like, Grinbaju. I think that's the only two times, I think. I might be forgetting something. Yeah. Chat, have you guys ever topped a, an event, a Yu-Gi-Oh event? Topped in the sense that, like, you know, you got top eight, I guess, in the regionals, what that's considered. I'll ask a question in chat uh, as a poll. I assume most people haven't, since, like, by definition, topping is kind of seen as special. And there's no shame, by the way, in not having topped an event. Trust me, it's not the end, end of the world. And a lot of people like to be like, yeah, like, if you top an event, it's... You're, like, this high-quality Yu-Gi-Oh! player, but, I mean, it's not... If you don't top one, it doesn't really change the real world, your real life. We're gonna watch Puptron again. I like watching this Thunder Dragon deck. It excites me. Never went to an event. Yeah, it's okay if you have not topped an event. I would recommend, though... Um... Just walk in and it's like this music. Um, that said, though, I would always recommend that people go to a Yu Gi Oh event if you haven't been to one. Like, go to a regional, go to a, a YCS, maybe if you can. I know those can be a little bit more expensive and they might not necessarily be like necessarily easy to get to. But if you can, that's my keyword, if like it's a viable thing for you, I recommend going. Wait, Puptron was, like, definitely losing this, but they actually made a Zeus and are, uh, they're alive. Maybe we didn't just walk in on an immediate defeat. Hmm. Alright. I'm rooting for you, Puptron. Let's go. This Zeus came in very clutch. You got 200 life points in a dream. Let's send him some energy in the chat. What are we what are we gonna send? Not enough of you guys are channel members. You don't have access to all my emotes. I do have channel emotes, by the way, if you if people we we made these a long time ago, but they're pretty darn cool. Here we go. Here's here's some some emotes. If you become a a channel member, you can you can use this stuff. Pop is literally yummy. It might be. Okay, so this is a... Like, what is this? Just a Pendulum Magician kind of suit? 
Oh, I see this thing. I guess this works pretty well with Electromite and stuff. Caribbean Princess, I assume. Okay. Purple Poison Magician. That's a one. On Ice Synchron, that's a six. So this is Scales. Does a Master Duel Tournament count as a top? I guess if you want it to. So it seems like the majority of us have not topped Yu-Gi-Oh! events. Wow, you guys should feel so ashamed that you have not topped a Yu-Gi-Oh! event. It's what life's all about. <laughs> nah. Okay, so we're Pendulum Summoning out, Performer Palace, Celestial Magician. Looks like that's about it. Gintrude adds back to hand. Okay, Paul, for the new Yu-Gi-Oh! people in chat, what's the difference between a YCS, Worlds, and a Regional? Uh... You know what? That's a great concept to explain, and I'm not even sure I'm the best person to explain it, but basically, a Yu-Gi-Oh! Regional is, like, literally kind of what it says. It's kind of an event where, like, people from a certain region would sort of gather. They're seen as less, I think, notable than, I guess, a YCS, because that's kind of more like a national level event. And then, um, nationals itself is something that you have to, like, qualify for by topping at a regional or getting an invite at a regional or YCS. And then from nationals, each major territory has a nationals. And so then a few people from each major territory will qualify for worlds. Yeah, I'm not good at explaining these sorts of things. But that's like the gist. It goes like regional, YCS, Nats, worlds. You do this every weekend? Well, I don't necessarily do this um, every weekend, but Konami does. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cup. I'm glad you asked. I've got a perfect slide for you. So, Konami is hosting these free Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cups every weekend on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. You are able to enter for a chance to win some really cool Yu-Gi-Oh! prizes, such as the Master Duel hoodie that I'm wearing, or even a Rescue Rabbit plush, plus some Master Duel sleeves. They are real sleeves, in fact. I have some right here. I can show you. Yes, I did. Yeah. These are like real, real Yu-Gi-Oh! sleeves. They look quite cool. Um, and... These events come in many different sizes. Today is 128 players. There's going to be a 256 player one tomorrow hosted by Kriparian. And there's even going to be like a 512 player one or something at the end of the month where they're going to be having a PS3, not PS3, a PS5 as the prize. So if you want information on how to enter these Master Duel Challenger Cups, you can find all of it in their official Discord that is linked down below. That is all. PS3 fat, at least. I want to win a Super NES. Maybe that'd be a better prize than PS5. So yeah, we're waiting uh, on one overtime match before the next round starts. So... This is... Oh my god, this is... This is a username. Rex Erection versus Usoria. That sounds terrifying. Let's see if we can find a cool match to spectate. Maybe we'll get lucky. Hexlex. A lot of people know about Hexlex. Hexlex. 
believe she is a somewhat more competitive Yu Gi Oh streamer. If anybody knows, you can let me know. Not fully up to date on every single person in existence in this community. But Skarn seems to be playing what I would guess is. You know, I was gonna say Labyrinth because I saw Dharma Cannon, but then I actually full armor exists, so like, I have no clue anymore. Anyway, Hexlex has got that Bell Star out. We'll watch this match and see how it unfolds. Yeah, how do you sign up for these? Links are all in the description of the stream. Just join that Discord server. It's got all the information you need about the upcoming events, how to sign up for them, everything. I might be playing in one soon. Right now I have to host them, but uh, any ones that I'm not hosting, I could definitely play in. Oh, the Master Blaze is back. What's up? Hexflex has made top eight in a few Challenger Cups. They're definitely on the radar. Yeah, I've seen Hexflex's name around, so... I assumed um, they're pretty good. <clears throat> oh, is this a Tistina deck working? So that's why they're playing Destructive Dharma Karma Cannon. Hmm. Tistina. How does this work? Okay. I'm just reading these. Sorry. I don't know very much about Tistina, so... I just heard... Everybody says it sucks, so I'm just excited to see it doing anything at all. Particularly against Snake Eye. Yeah, finally, Justina gets a chance to shine. Hexlex is a content creator. I enjoy their videos. I'm rooting for them. Yeah, I've seen Hexlex's name in many of these Challenger Cups, so they are certainly someone that... Whoa! What the heck? And all based on cards your opponent controls from the graveyard. That's cool. So this is a this is the same Tistina Armored Xyz deck we saw before, but it looks like they actually picked up a win this time. Huh. Would Dharma be good would Daruma be good in Red Dragon Archfiend? It could be worth a shot. Master Blaze says, I feel so bad for Tistina. They're a deck that like flipping stuff face down, but prop while the opponent has face up cards. So oftentimes you turn off your own effects. Yeah, I I don't know much about Tistina. Uh, so I knew that when they said that they were about flipping cards face down, I thought there was some potential there, because we've seen even decks like Ninjas get decent success, like having kind of a flip up, flip down strategy. It seems like it just wasn't able to really take off. Also, the next round is now beginning, so. We're going to get to watch... Oh, I recognize some names. Foster Cubed. Okay. I'm going to take a quick look at the bracket and see... If I can get the gist of what's going on here. Foster Cube's actually in first place in the rankings so far as of the end of round three. Seems MBT is two and one. I'd like to watch one of his games. People said they wanted to see. Is he... Is MBT at... In this room? There he is! Okay. Okay. We'll wait and we'll watch we'll watch Joseph's game. I'm sure you guys would love to see that, eh? Joseph was playing in the Challenger Cup yesterday as well. 
So I think he's definitely like vying for the glory here. Late to join only today. Um, today's tournament has already started, but there are more. There's one tomorrow. There are more next weekend. Would definitely recommend you guys hit them all up. Your chance to win some of this really cool stuff, eh? That wouldn't be so bad. Anyways, yeah, we're just waiting on this on round four to kick off. I think it should be starting here in just a moment. As soon as this lights up, we'll hop in. Anyway, what are people saying in chat? Tomorrow has like 50 spots left. Yeah, okay, cool. Also, I think that they try to encourage people who've signed up and won't be able to make it to like drop out at the last, like later on if, if like you're not going to make it. So at least 50 spots are left to sign up for the Master Duel Challenger Cup for tomorrow. And I recommend that you guys do. If you're first tuning in here, that's what we're doing. We're spectating the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cups. By the way, if you're enjoying the stream, um, a like is always appreciated. Super chats are nice too, but the like is the really more important thing. If you guys all like the stream uh, at around the same time, it actually makes YouTube boost it out to more people so we can get some more viewership on this. More people can enjoy the fun of Yu-Gi-Oh! On a Saturday afternoon. I would even like to play in one of these. At first, I was like, oh, I'll just kind of spectate them. Because, you know, that's what I'm supposed to do as a content creator. But I wouldn't mind playing in one. Just to see how I do. Might surprise myself. Might get some, uh... Some neat prizes. Can I join tomorrow's Challenger Cup even if I'm not from the U.S.? Hmm. Well, you can't, but I do have some advice for you. So... Um, even though, even though Konami does not have, uh, Challenger Cups for things like Canada and maybe like Mexico or South America and stuff yet, you should always, always, always ask them to go on social media, let them know that you would like a Challenger Cup in your region and you know really spam them be like hey you know i would really like watching the challenger cups i just wish i had one in my region i'd love to play and if you guys pressure them you might be surprised they might actually bring it to other territories i've let them know that plenty of people in my chats and in my community have been bringing that up so do your due diligence let konami know that it's a thing that you want don't just spam them about the ban list be like hey i want like you know a tangible thing that i can play in this weekend because I think that they'd be more likely to listen to that and be able to do it. Anywho, it looks like the round is beginning, so we're going to watch Joseph MBT Yu-Gi-Oh! versus... I don't know how to say this name. Let's get this show on the road. Alright, press 1 if you're rooting for MBT. Press 2 if you want to see his downfall and demise. I'm going to participate in this vote. <laughs> I, I guess, though. I mean, I think this will be cool. Good luck to both duelists. Let's see how it goes. I know Joseph was saying on Twitter recently that he is taking these Master Duel Challenger Cups very seriously and wants to really, you know, sort of do well in them, prepare, take it, you know, like put his best foot forward, not meme, which is a good mentality to have. His opponent is Thetis? Thetis? Don't know. But we'll see. I think the Master Blaze is like our resident, knowledgeable Yu-Gi-Oh player in the chat. If I could assign like titles to people, that would be that would be your title. You seem really informed, and I like that. I have a tough time. I, I feel like I'm pretty informed on things. But I have a tougher time like explaining stuff live in chat, and I think that's uh. It's good that like you guys in chat who know about like different decks how they work are able to explain stuff to like other people who are new and they kind of tune in. So it makes it feel like more of a community effort and that's really cool. 
I've always said that's actually why I think I enjoy making like VOD style videos as opposed to um as opposed to like live streaming. I don't think I'm very good like impromptu, but I think I can write a good script or like kind of prepare myself to explain something well. Like even when I'm watching these duels, I'm just like at all it's not that it's like going over my head. Cause like I mean I play a lot of master duel pretty competitively myself. But I, I was realizing yesterday, I'm not very good at, like, explaining what's happening in my head or, like, kind of spectating what's happening on the screen. But I'm just good at, like, keeping it up here. Does that make sense to anyone else? Does anybody else like that with Yu-Gi-Oh? Like, where you can play pretty well yourself, but, like, not as much so with, like, watching other people. If that's relatable at all. That might literally just be me. I'm rambling. The point is, Joseph is going first. He is, um... Doing Snake Eye things doesn't seem to be a particularly different board or anything. His opponent has not done very much. To stop him. So, an unimpeded Snake Eye turn usually spells defeat and demise for his opponent. We'll see, though. I hope this duel is fun and interesting. Me too. Me too. I hope so, too. Gara of the Funk. I understand what you mean, but I'm not a good player. Uh, I mean, I don't even say I'm a good player. I just say that I, I, mean, I play a lot. <laughs> Alec was watching Invincible earlier today. I don't know if he was watching Episode 8, but he was watching it earlier. Okay, that's a fun poll for you guys in chat. Let's see how much hubris you all have. The chat question, we're going to have a poll. Are you a good Yu-Gi-Oh player? Yes. No. Like, so the question is, do you consider yourself to be a good Yu-Gi-Oh player, chat? And be honest. Like, there's nothing wrong with being, you know, saying, like, no, I'm a bad Yu-Gi-Oh player. There's also nothing wrong with being like, yes, I think I am a good Yu-Gi-Oh player. You know, if you think that you've really got it, you know, you got the sauce, you're him or her, then it's okay to be like, yeah, I think I am good at Yu-Gi-Oh. But also, if you are like, uh, I'm not really very confident, you can vote no. And it is a binary question on purpose. So I'm well aware that those are not like two easy answers to pick between. I think it's a fun one. Like, I would say, I think I'm a good Yu-Gi-Oh player. But, like, I don't know that I've really got, like, any huge accolades to prove it. I think that when I'm playing, I feel like I'm, I know what's going on. But who knows? American... Do Deutscher? I don't think I'm a bad Yu-Gi-Oh player, but I definitely am a horrible deck builder. Deck building is an entirely different skill. Yeah, that, okay. That's something that I would like to know about. You guys, do you feel that deck building is like a different thing than like dueling or being good at Yu-Gi-Oh? And in what ways? I mean, I, we know it's different, obviously. Like, it's a different kind of skill set. But, like, do you feel that it's um something that... Like, are you like a... Like, is anyone in the chat good at deck building but bad at playing or vice versa? Like, good at playing but maybe not so good at deck building. And I'm not really talking about just like, oh, I can't afford the best deck. I mean, like, literally just conceiving the deck and, like, thinking about the cards to put in or exclude based on, like, the event that you're playing at or the meta game that you're in. All right, what is MBT's opponent playing? Tiara Laments. That'll be interesting. So we're getting Tear versus Snake Eye. I promise you guys I would not show you too much Snake Eye today, and I don't plan to, so you can blame MBT for it. Let him know I said it too. But if it's Tear versus Snake Eye, that could be pretty interesting. I could be sold on such a thing. Oh, almost 300 viewers. Okay. 
Uh, that must mean that some of you guys are new to this, new to the stream. If you are, we're watching the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cup. Currently spectating MBT versus Thetis. Thetis? An opponent. MBT is on Snake Eye, and he's playing against an opponent that at least has started with some Tier Laments cards. Press 1 if you're rooting for Snake Eye. Press 2 if you're rooting for Tier Laments. This is an interesting question to me, because I think that if I asked this, like, last year, people would be like, Screw Tier Laments, I hate that deck. But I think that they've now become, uh, a little bit more of a fan favorite. I think that regardless of which deck wins, these two decks are both pretty self-expressive when they want to be, and can certainly be well-equipped for a grind game, so... I don't really mind either one winning, you know, as my, uh, fellow YouTuber brethren, I gotta... kinda root for MBT a little bit, but... still... Um, as someone who's watched quite a lot of Snake Eye matchups recently, I, I will say that I'm, uh... Variety is the spice of life. If I had to put my money on one, I think Snake Eye will probably take this win, because they've been doing so, but, uh, you know, a lot in these last few days, but, uh, I like the fun surprise of a tier limit deck doing well. Ooh, maybe not a good start so far, though. Call by the Grave. On Habness. Right? Yeah, Habness. I'm a fire Andy, so I root for my beloved fire decks. No, no, hey, listen, nothing wrong with that. I kind of wish that, um, fire in general, like, got to be a good type. Like, I still feel like it's not fire yet. Like, it kind of still feels like it's, like, snake eye that's, I mean, that's a fire deck. You know what I mean. Now, Dr. Hydro has pretty much got the long and short of it. Variety is indeed the spice of life, but variety will never be meta. And that's a shame. According to Dr. Hydro, anyway. You're kind of right, though. I mean, like, I think what makes the variety fun is the fact that you know the meta is going to largely be the same thing, and so it makes it more exciting when you do, um, different stuff. And yeah, you guys are right. Like, once Tenbei comes out, and obviously once, like, Fire Kings are in Master Duel, then I feel like we actually are in a fire metagame at that point, because it's like, you know, a lot of different fire decks, not just the one Snake Eye thing. Yeah, that's what I meant, yeah. I hope that the Flame Swordsman deck comes to Master Duel soon, too. Like, it really needs to, because if they added Bonfire and, uh... What is that? What's the, the one that... Transaction Rollback? that both came in Maze of Millennia, I really think they should hurry and get, like, the Flame Swordsman cards in. They're not gonna be, like, meta-meta or anything, right? But, like, it's a surprisingly good little go on second deck. You can OTK people pretty fast with it. And I think that we haven't gotten a good, like, anime deck in Master Duel in a while. Like, I know Volcanic got their stuff, and, like, Red Dragon Archfiend did, but like Flame Swordsman, it's very OG anime. Like, people really like when that stuff comes in Master Duel. Oh, Super Poly. That's a surprise. That said, okay, two wind monsters Apollosa and Theron de Flua to make Mud Dragon. Super Poly is really busted, but when you make Mud Dragon, it doesn't always feel like it. Like, it's still cool to get, you know, two, like, big negate monsters off the field, but my dragon's just not very big. Is Fire King considered OP? Because I know it's good and I want to learn it, but I don't like playing the best decks in the ATCG. I mean, yeah, Fire King is at least 50% of the best deck right now, but that doesn't mean you can't play it. I mean, you should still give it a shot. Like, strong, sure, but you could play Fire King and, like, it might get, like, say Snake Eye gets hit in the next TCG ban list, right? Fire King might suddenly be not, like, the best deck or something, but it still could be just fun and reasonably strong. And so if you start playing it now, then you'll have that experience with the deck. Even before it gets hit on a list.
<laughs> so, uh, we're just waiting, I guess. Like, nothing's, nothing's going on? Is Thetis thinking? I don't know, I don't know what's happening. Okay, battle phase. Yeah, Master Blaze says, Master Duel is pretty much just Snake Eyes as the fire deck. Rescue Ace is still missing its support. Uh, fire Kings and Flame Swords are not in the game. Yeah, I mean, once all that stuff comes in, then I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good as in, like, good for fire. Like, it'll feel like we're in a fire game, not just, like, a Snake Eyes game right now. I really want Blue Eyes Toon Dragon for the better effect. I do think Konami should do that. I think that they need to go back and, like, reprint these old Toon monsters that just suck. Like, retrain Toon Blue Eyes. Make Toon Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon or something. You guys would like that, right? Yes? No? Like, because, I mean, it's cool that they have new Toon stuff that's good, but, like, if you want to play a Toon deck, I'd imagine that you'd want, like, to still use kind of something that's thematically similar to what Pegasus was playing. And... Pegasus played like Toon Blue Eyes, Toon Summon Skull, you know, those sorts of cards. And Mongery ran. So it would be nice to see them get retrains in addition to like whatever other new Toon stuff comes out. Oh yeah, I forgot Infernoble is also a thing. I play against that a fair bit in Master Duel actually, you'd be surprised. But it never seems to really like, it's very much what you said, like in a best of one format, it's coin flippy. Very coin flippy. Okay, so this, this game's taking a bit of a turn. Um, what looked like a pretty easy win for MBT with Snake Eye. It's kind of turned around a little bit thanks to Super Poly getting rid of Opelosa and Barone. However, Tyr has not actually been able to put up much of an offensive front. Like, I mean, it's just trying to swing with, you know, Mud Dragon and, and like, Rhino Heart. They're powered up by the field spell, but that doesn't really mean anything to Snake Eyes. Let's see how he manages to work this situation. Starts off with the normal summoned Snake Eye Ash. Yeah, Snake Eyes always claps back. Like, that's just kind of how it goes. Because you got Divine Temple, I have zero concerns about this. I'd like to see Toon Mermaid retrain. Oh, yeah, for sure. Toon Mermaid definitely deserves it. That card does, like, nothing. Okay, Ash is using its effect. Gets Oak. When I say retrained um, Ewok, you're asking about what I mean by that. So basically, like, when they just take an old card and kind of give it a, a new form that usually maybe has, like, the same stats or something as the original, but a much more modernized effect. Think, uh... Blue Eyes, Alternative White Dragon, uh... What are some examples of good monster retrains in Yu-Gi-Oh! chat? Just to help uh, explain the concept, Ewok was asking. That reminds me, guys. I got permission for something really cool. So, if you were in the stream yesterday, you'll remember that we um, were trying to use this overlay to watch our duels full screen, but we ran into the problem that, uh, you know, my face cam here obscures the side of the field. Well, I got permission to move it. So, let me see if I can, like... Yeah, so they, they said I can, I'm allowed to move this and even shrink it. So I'm going to, like, move it right here. 
And I think if I put it like right here, then it won't cover too much stuff. Would this be a good spot for it, chat? You guys think this is good? Press one if you approve. That way we can use full screen and see like more of the duel, but still see like what's going on. I mean, I guess the only downside is like, you can't see how many cards are in like the grave, but I don't think that's really super relevant. So you guys, you guys think this is pretty good? Yes? Yeah, okay, cool. We'll, we'll stick with this. Because I'm just a, I'm a big fan of like filling up the screen with as much just content and like visual information. And so like when we were doing it like this, I was like, yeah, that's, yeah. So we'll, we'll stick with this. I want full screen. It makes, it lets us see the beautiful Master Duel graphics. Looks like Paul just got banished. Sometimes I feel like it. Alright, let me catch back up on what's actually happening here. I should probably see. So, he made dark and- oh! Wow. F's in chat. That really sucks. MBT actually just lost to time. Huh. Man, the Master Timer is a cruel mistress. I'm, I'm, that's, that's unfortunate. I was, I was getting into that. Uh, the, he's hearing the Master Duel music play after a very anticlimactic loss like that. It really weighs on you. Huh. Leon R, yo, Paul, love the video you uploaded. It was fun to watch, and your friend is pumped. Yeah, we uploaded a new video yesterday. If you guys haven't watched it, definitely watch it. We uh, asked our friend Jordan. He is a bodybuilder, actually, um, as people could probably tell in the comments. But yeah, he likes Yu-Gi-Oh! a little bit. He's like watched the anime and stuff, and so we showed him some modern cards. He had to guess if they're good or bad. Um, it's a fun video, so give it a look if you haven't seen it. Okay, well, anywho... I think that's the end of this round as well. Man, I feel bad for Joseph, though. Like, that's... He's ran out of time. No one likes to lose to time. Like, I think universally we can all agree. No matter what you think of, you know, any modern Yu-Gi-Oh! kind of conundrum or whatever. Like, whether you like combo decks or stun decks or you hate the meta or you love the meta, whatever. Seeing someone just lose to, like, the timer in Master Duel or losing in time in general... Just, can we all agree that just sort of sucks? I get it, I get it, I know, I know what people are gonna say, well, like, the time is part of the game, too, and, like, you gotta know your decks, you can play fast, all that stuff, and that's all true. I'm not suggesting that that isn't true. It's just that, like, we all want a duel to, like, end in a victor, not, like, a technicality. I don't know, I just, I, I don't think that there's, like, ever really, like, a, a fun, like, oh, time, you know... Now, it does suck, something that does kind of suck is that, like, usually the best duels are the most threatened by the timer because they're, like, intense, they're interactive, and both players really, like, have to think through their plays a lot. And so, those tend to be the duels where the time kind of runs out the most, so that sort of sucks. The Fatal Crest, the timer sucks, but it's funny to me. There, There is a funniness to it, like... I, when, when, like, you know, the time's just ticking down, someone has to, like, make really weird, crazy decisions that they wouldn't maybe normally make. Like, it's exciting in a way, like, when time is, like, ticking down and affecting the players mentally. But, like, I don't know. I guess just... Uh... Overall, I do not like seeing people lose to time. That is all. Imagine having a speech impediment and a timer IRL to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, Lord, that sounds like a nightmare. Well, man... While we wait for the next round, I guess we'll... Pleiades. 
that's that's the same player from yesterday. I remember them. They lost to Prince. Let's watch this replay. Son Goku, hi Paul, can I get a shout out? Sure. Shout out Son Goku. That counts. It does stop the stallers. I mean, people do get salty and stall in Master Duel. I've seen that happen a lot. Oh man, Pleiades is playing Vanquish Soul again. That is awesome. I am very biased towards Vanquish Soul. Okay, the Master Blaze says, I think the Master Duel timer is just barely too short. After playing it for Noble, it feels really bad when there's only 40 seconds left, even when I don't waste time thinking. Yeah, so a funny story about the Master Duel timer that, um, yeah, people do sometimes purposely waste time. The, the thing about the Master Duel timer is a funny story. So, you know, I've played in like those Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Invitationals that they've had, like the one-year Invitational, the two-year Invitational. In the first Invitational, I played, um, I played against like Doug Z in whatever round I was in. And we both were like scrambling against the timer. And we, um, after the first game, because it's like, you know, the best of three games or whatever, you played all three games. After the first game, we were like, hey guys, like, can we please, um, increase the timer? Like, I don't, I don't know. I think it was maybe just at the 300 one, but it might have been shorter because it was like a custom dual room or something. And we were just like, hey, can we increase the timer? And the Konami people were just like, no, like, we can't change the timer for this. Yeah, uh, that's like the rules of the tournament or whatever. And I was just like, man, if you're doing like a an exhibition match sort of thing, I think it's it's good to have maybe a little a little more time for the players involved. However, um, I think that what was really happening because it was I think the normal timer, I think what was really happening is that like we were both streaming the event, and so we were kind of trying to like talk to our chat and entertain our chat while playing and you got to remember you can't really do that like you have to actually um just focus and play the game like you can't talk and duel i'm already bad at that as it is but yeah dopest gemini wait i want in how do i get in on this so i'm glad you asked this is the Yu-Gi-Oh master duel challenger cup and basically, these are these free Master Duel tournaments that Konami is doing every weekend on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. You can enter them and get a chance to win awesome prizes, as shown here. Like this Rescue Rabbit plush, the Master Duel hoodie I'm wearing, all kinds of other stuff like that. And, um, yeah, all you gotta do for information on how to join is click the Discord link at the top of the description. There's gonna be a new tournament happening tomorrow. I will not be streaming it, actually. It's gonna be streamed on Kriparian's channel, but... It's a 256 player one, so there's a lot of prizes um, available up for grabs. Yeah, that's all you need to know. And if you're enjoying the stream, a like and a sub to the channel is always really appreciated. A like in particular, like just liking the stream actually does a lot. On YouTube, if people like a live stream, it immediately shows it to more people. It's just sort of a hack. So if you guys are watching and just lurking, then that's a cool thing to do. Now, back to the conversation about the timer in Master Duel. Uh, I don't think that the timer is, like, at a bad spot right now, but I do think that, like, it would be... So, here's what I think they should do for the timer in Master Duel. Um, I think it's fine, but I wish that you got more time when it, like, resets, um after each turn. Does that make sense? It's so like starting it at 300 is totally okay, but I think like when the turn switch is over, basically if the turn switches over to your opponent, you get 30 seconds back. And then when it switches back to your turn, you get 60 seconds back. I think if they could maybe increase that, where it's like, when it switches back to your turn, you get 90 seconds. And then when it switches to your opponent's turn, you get 60 seconds. Because the way that decks work in Yu-Gi-Oh! now, like everything is so interactive, like, there are a lot of, um, yeah, 30 seconds for disruption is very low. Like, there's just, there's a lot of thinking to be had. It's like when I'm climbing ladder and stuff, and I play, like, Vanquish Soul, for instance, there are so many, like, decisions to be made, and I'm having to, like, pay attention to what my opponent is doing, and then decide what I want to do. 
And so if I end my turn and I only get, see, here's another game that ended in, from time as well. Like, if I only get like 30 more seconds, like, it's just, you guys know. You guys know what I mean. Like, if you have played Master Duel and you just play ranked, like, you, you know how that goes. And sometimes it's like also rough if you're playing Vanquish Soul, where like you have to reveal the cards in your hand to activate effects. Like, say you have to reveal three to activate like Caesar Valleys' effect, right? You have to select each individually, and you'll literally lose like a second with each like card you click. It can just it can get really um. It, I think like that would be a, a good change to make. The first turn I never really have a problem with. It's just um. I think it's just that like when the turns go back and forth, you should get more time back on those cases. It sounds like people at least agree. Can we at least agree to that? Does that sound like reasonable? Like turn one hasn't been too much of an issue in my experience. Even for combo decks, it seems like it's more or less fine. But um But yeah, like I, I think that like when the games get grindy and interactive, it really, 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 really it, it can be a crunch on the players. Yeah, Master Blaze, I've lost plenty of grindy games. I was winging to timer because I was snickled and dimed. Yeah. I agree. I think uh just when you when the turn passes, getting a little bit more time there would be good. All right, so we are actually now in the next round. This is round five, beginning right now. Trap Dookie versus Archaic Raids. This is a hilarious name, so there we're gonna watch them. If Trap Dookie is playing, uh, <laughs> Trap Dookie. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's, that's silly. Um, if they're playing Labyrinth, that would be very fitting. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the, the pairings now. Yeah, this is actually table one, is Trap Dookie. So this person actually is, apparently, both these players are quite good, despite the... The silly names. Ah, looks like this is probably an Unchained deck. We've seen a few Unchained decks today. I suppose one more can't hurt. Prosperity and a tour guide. Oh, that sounds golden. It's like when I play Vanquasol and I Prosperity into Rosin. Absolutely amazing. Watch them be on Runic. Oh man, I swear, please no. Okay, summons Tour Guide. It gets hit by Effect Veiler. That's usually not like the end of the world, but it does really bite. Paul, you are wonderful. Thank you for the work you do. I don't deserve your kindness. Sorry, I had to talk to production about something. Yeah, Bob, Bobby, said this game is demanding enough without having to micromanage every second you're given. Yeah, for sure. I, I think, um... Oh, what is this person saying? Uh, what should be done is that if you don't end your turn before 60 seconds, you lose the turn and it's your opponent's draw turn? What? If you don't end the turn before... Oh, so... Are you troll? Like... Are you suggesting that people should get 60 seconds to play their whole turn? Jesus Christ. Like, I know, like, Yu-Gi-Oh turns take a while, but that's... That's brutal. It would be better if you lose the turn? That sounds awful. Am I understanding you correctly, Illidan? Like, you lose the turn if you don't finish it in 60 seconds? No way. Wait, okay. I might be misunderstanding this. He's suggesting when the timer ends, it passes turn... Instead of ending the duel. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Let me think about that. If that's is, if that's what you mean, Illidan, then sorry, I, I totally misunderstood you. Let me think. Okay. If the timer runs out, your opponent should draw, and you lose the turn. Okay. Yeah. All right. In that case, I get that. I I think that that would be okay. I mean, it wouldn't be like ideal, but it'd be okay. Now, hmm, there is one issue though that I that kind of comes up with it. If okay, so like let's say that I'm playing branded, right? And like I've got in phase effects that are gonna be resolving. And I run out of time in like my main phase one or something. Sometime in my main phase. It's still gonna have to go to end phase and resolve those. And like some of those involve making decisions. So in a way, that's kinda like Um I mean like that's like you get extra time if there's like mandatory end phase stuff to resolve. So I'm not sure if that would really work. I mean, I suppose if it's mandatory, it's just mandatory, and that's, like, how it goes, but... that That's the only thing that kind of gives me pause. But I, I do agree with, like, the general idea of you just... Your turn has to automatically end when your time runs out, as opposed to, like, just the duel ends and, like, your know, time limit win. So, I get where you're going with it. I, I can I can see that. Sorry, I totally, I totally misunderstood you. Um, that's just a serviceable idea. Um, Yasumigi says, bring back 30 second duels. Low key, that was a really fun side event, the 30 second duel. Okay, I have a I have a suggestion for Master Duel. I got a suggestion for Master Duel, and I know that like, I'm sure like some Konami person will probably watch this stream or this VOD at some point, so here's my input, Konami, listen up. And if people in the chat agree with it, then they, be, they can maybe, uh, you know, give their agreement in chat and then Konami can see this and maybe they'll do it. Alright, listen, here's, here's, here's my proposition. All of those events that Master Duel does, all the dual trial events, like the GOAT format event, the Nibiru event that they're doing, the 30 second duel thing. Those should all stay as permanent events. They should all be like things that you can queue into whenever you want, right? So like the 30 second duels were fun and crazy and stressful and you don't have to play them if you don't want to. But I think that you should always have the choice to like cue into it if you're bored and like you just kind of want to have something different. Because in a gamer, we don't really actually have like alternate formats, right? Like we don't really get to do, you know, low power formats and stuff. Those are kind of the next best thing. And I think that it would be cool to like when I'm tired of playing ladder all day long, I can just hop in and do like a crazy 30 second duel or the 2024 life point challenge or you know, whatever. Like, just keep all those old festivals, all those duel trials, just have it on a side tab and like you can, you know, queue in. Now, here's the thing I think I totally understand why they don't want the prizes to always be available like all the time. So maybe when the event is like active you can get prizes from it. Like, that's how you can get, like, gems and the titles and all that, and, you know, whatever the bait is, maybe, for the event. But you should still be able to, like, just queue into that format at any time. Even if it's not for prizes, it can just be for fun. So, does that sound like a good idea? If you guys agree with that idea, and you maybe want Konami to have a chance at seeing it and potentially implementing it in the Master Duel, you should say in the chat, Yes, Konami, that does sound like a pretty good idea making dual trials and events available to queue into even after they're finished if players just want to do them for fun. Because I think it'd be fun. Now, are there downsides to such a feature? I... Sure, right? Like, maybe for Konami, they don't want a bunch of empty events where, like, maybe no one's queuing in a 30-second duel today, and so now it makes it feel empty and people don't like that. But I still think that giving players options and different ways to play would make the game even more fun than it is. Like, I like Master Duel, I do, it's fun already, but just having different ways to play besides the one ranked mode 
would do wonders for just kind of the longevity and like making, you know, just like more ways to play. So hopefully Konami will see this and hear this and be like, yeah, you know, maybe we can consider that. Pass it on to the devs, eh? Ones in chat if you agree. All right, let's get back to this actual duel, huh? What turn is it? Trap Dookie's turn. Against Archaic Rage. Maxi gets dropped in response to Divine Temple. Because listen, y'all, I know Konami like will go back and like watch this stream again. So we, if if they're going to, we might as well like, you know. Might as well give them some some master duel feedback suggestions, huh? My only other master duel like realistic sort of feature and like suggestion that I would like is the ability to pick your song. Yeah, I do put this stuff in the surveys as well, by the way. Like whenever we do the master duel surveys, but you know. Um, I think the ability to pick your song for duels would be awesome. Right now in Master Duel, the song that plays is based on your opponent's duel field, but all of the new duel fields that they've added in all just kind of default to, like, this song and the one other, like, song that plays a lot. And I think it'd be super cool if you could just, like, pick the background music yourself because there are some really cool, like, background themes in this game. Like, I like the background theme for, um... For the Ancient Gear Field. That's my favorite dual theme. But my opponent literally has to be playing the Ancient Gear Field. And nobody plays the Ancient Gear Field because it's one of the first ones in the game. And most people just see it as kind of boring and not very cool. And so they pick other stuff. But, like, I, I, I just want, like, yeah, like a jukebox feature, right? Like, I just want to be able to pick from all the songs that the game has to offer. And I can play them in my own duels. Because this theme plays so much. The thing that you guys are hearing right now, I play ranked, like, hardcore a lot of nights and it's just it's this and like that one other dual theme that play all the time and it's like man i'm so tired of hearing it and this song's cool too but like uh, i have others i like too and so and the reason i think that both these features would be good is because these are already, like, things that exist in the game. So these don't take, like, any extra, you know, development or, like, code. I mean, not, I don't design games. I'm sure they take a little bit of extra development or coding. But, like, generally speaking, I think that, like, all the music is in the game already. It's just a matter of, like, letting you pick your background music, right? And same with, like, having the, um, the different festivals and, like, dual trial modes as options. Is because, like, those are already, like modes that like exist you just keep them in rotation as opposed to like kind of having them not be available i don't know it'd be neat these would be cool master tool things that is all Just, like, little stuff that would make Master Duel a little bit more, uh... Just more options, more ways to play. I know, like, stuff like Tag Duels or Battle Royale Duels are a little bit more ambitious because that would take a lot of additional, like, work on their end. And I totally understand why that sort of thing can't, you know, just be an immediate... Right? Like, but... I I think that at least, you know, keeping the, the events around for people to queue into afterwards would be cool. Thoughts on emotes in Master Duel? Hmm. Do you guys think Master Duel should have emotes? I... Like, in place of chat, you mean? Because obviously they can't add a chat mode in Master Duel. I think that would be... I think everybody knows why that would not work out. But, um... But, like... 
Uh, emotes could be all right. I, I don't, I somehow feel like Konami would just maybe prefer that, that um, emotes even not show up there. Because like people will still kind of develop a bit of a language with emotes, you guys know how that works. Where there will be something that's sort of spammed as like a, a bit of BM and maybe they don't want that. I wouldn't hate the idea, but mm. I know people would do it. Oh, looks like Trap Dookie has won this duel. Maybe. Yeah. That's a dub for Trap Dookie. Congratulations. Have a lobby chat to make it a dating sim so I can find my soulmate. <laughs> Jeez, imagine finding your soulmate on Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. What if we kissed under the Draconic Diagram? Okay, congratulations to Trap Dookie. They win this one. I think that they're undefeated right now in um so far in this tournament. So only a few matches left to go. Let's see if there's anything else that may be worth watching here. We might be able to check out an MBT replay, perhaps? Can I keep track of... I know you already watched him this round, I think. Yeah, okay, so... Nothing new to watch here. Duber versus Ben. Let's watch that. Let's see what's happening here. Oh man, Snake Eye versus Unchained again. Hmm. Maybe not. Sanders versus Wings. Let's see if this is not uh not another Snake Eye matchup. Please, let's pray to God. Pray to Ra. What is this? A magic cylinder deck? Versus Fluanderies? Or something. I'll watch this. What is going on? What is this deck? They Lord of the Heavenly Prison and they set Secret Blast Dimension Wall. This is a burn deck. Oh no! Oh wait. They used Heavenly Prison. I forgot it's still revealed. Yeah, okay, so Dust- wait, why did this person use Duster if Heavenly Prison was revealed? I didn't read it. Well, I mean, look at me, I didn't really read it. Um, okay. So, it's a Bricking Fluanderies deck versus a Magic Cylinder deck. They summon Lord of the Heavenly Prison, set a Secret Barrel. Is this burn deck going to actually just- win against Flu Wanderies. That's going to be hilarious if that happens. Yeah, I think this is actually happening. Oh, man. Poor guy. Oh, man. Didn't think I'd actually see, like, a Chain Strike burn deck like in this tournament. Dimension Wall. So I guess, like... He's just going defensive because, like, he doesn't care? What's he gonna burn him with? Is it this thing? Oh, 
That's funny. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's funny. I don't know why that's so funny. Just the, the magic cylinder effect. Ew, what? Game. Okay, well, that was fun. Uh, okay, so I think this is the end of round five. I suppose time would have just run out by now. <laughs> There's nothing like seeing somebody get magic cylindered in like 2024. <laughs> um, okay, uh, what round? That was round five. So, are we in round six? Okay, we're not in round six yet, but we can check the standings. Okay, you know what's funny? That player that we just watched, Sanders Yu-Gi-Oh! They're currently in first place in the rankings right now. If you can believe that. that The player who just used Magic Cylinder is winning this tournament. This has taken a turn. You know why? Because I am rooting for a Sanders Yu-Gi-Oh to win with this Magic Cylinder deck. I I want to see this. If they can beat like Snake Eyes, apparently they can't. I mean, they're five and zero. So like, jeez. Cool. Okay, so round six is about to start, I've been told. From production. Table four, two mystery decks. Oh, that was Foster Cube's match? They say that Foster Cube had a really good match. I'm going to watch that while we wait. Okay. Yeah, so apparently this is a good matchup. That I've, I've been told that this was a good matchup. I don't know what these two decks are. They say that it's two mystery decks. I hope that I'm not being trolled and it's just two Fire King. Or not Fire King, but Snake Eye decks. Despia Visus? I'm here for it. Let's see. It's not Snake Eyes, so I'll take it. Basically, it's Brennan versus Monodium, it looks like. So right now, Dark Angel, this tournament's already in progress, but if you want to join in for the tournament tomorrow, you can check the link in the description and join the Discord server where they uh, handle, schedule, and do all these tournaments. There's a really big one happening tomorrow, and um, it's going to be actually bigger than this one. It's going to be 256 players. Yeah, this tournament is currently on progress. On progress. In progress. Oh, I thought this was going to be more of a back and forth. Man, these people always tell me, they'll be like, yeah, watch this matchup. And it's like, I want some back and forth grindy action, man. <laughs> I mean, it was cool. I just, uh, it was just an OTK. And I think round six hasn't started yet. It hasn't even been, the pairings haven't been posted for it. Or, or is this actually it? Like, is this, let me ask. Let me see, because I'm not sure how many rounds they're doing today. Let 
something, right? Because yesterday it was like three rounds. So it was like 64 people. Today it's 128. So that might be like five rounds. Because when they did 256 people, they were like seven rounds. So. Hmm. Okay, I see people getting back into their rooms. So it looks like... Okay. Oh, okay. There's a tie for 8th place right now, I've been informed. So I think that they're about to... They are about to, um... Okay. So here's the, here's the, here's the score. Basically, these two players... Kleck and Rixia are tied for 8th place. So they're about to cut to top 8, and they're going to have to play for um, the right to... the right to be in the top 8. So I have not watched either of these two players today. So... not really sure what decks they're using. But it's Kleck and Rixia. And then once we finish this... We'll know who our top eight players are and we'll get into top eight or top cut. And the difference with top cut is that the games are best two out of three. And also that the players can change decks between each game. In addition to that, the rounds are 45 minutes as opposed to the single 20 minute rounds that they've been doing in the best of ones. The sort of Swiss rounds, if you will. It's interesting, I haven't had a tiebreaker in one of these before. Or at least not, I haven't watched a, a tiebreaker round, I should say. So they should be starting that here in just a moment. But while we wait... What's a fun question you guys want us to talk about in chat? Maybe a poll that we can put up? People can vote? We can discuss it? Something to um, entertain ourselves. Or, okay, it's Rixia versus Zerglinator. Is Speed Duel going to go away to make Roy for Rush Duel in physical form? Not sure. I've heard many things. Um, nothing concrete, obviously, but I've heard many opinions. Okay, so... Whoa! Oh, okay, cool. We have interesting decks here. Interesting deck alert. Interesting deck alert. This is Plunder Patrol. Did not expect to see this doing well today. Plunder Patrol with... Um, a Diabell Star engine. You know, in here. But, still... Zerglinator is playing Plunder Patrol, and I don't have a problem with that. Let's see what Rixia's got to say about all of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, they sent to wipe a Diabell Star. Thought they were using they were some they're putting down a new field spell. Okay, Diabell Star gets hit with infinite impermanence. By the way, guys, in case you missed it, these this is uh, between these two players who makes top eight. The winner of this. So it's a tiebreaker. All right, so he's gonna link these two into Blackbeard. Uh, 
Forget what he does. Quick effect target effect monster and summon opponent patrol. From your extract with the same attribute as a monster your opponent controls or in their grave and then equip that target to it. And then draw a card. Yeah. Alec plays the opponent patrol deck. I just had to re-familiarize myself with it. This does sort of suck that he doesn't have any other Plunder Patrol monsters on the field. Hmm. They used Imperm, but he can always chain his effect because it's based on stuff that's in your opponent's grave, so... If they've used Ash Blossom, then yeah, he can summon... What is it? Bram? Yeah, Plunder Patrol ship Bram or Bran. And equip itself. And even get a draw. So that Imperm was... I won't say wasted. I mean, that forced out the activation sooner, but, um, still, you know, maybe it was a bit ill-advised. I guess it's the only time you'd have been able to use an Imperm, so, yeah, what do I know? Okay, so this is Snake Eyes versus Plunder Patrol. Oh, man, it doesn't bode too well for, for the Plunder Patrol deck. We'll see, though. Okay, so they're going to use Sinful Spoils' reversion to force Brand into the back row, but they do chain the effect, pitch the Plunder Patrol card, banish that Sinful Spoils of Subversion, and um, Zerglinator is going to get to add a Plunder Patrol monster from deck to hand. So, assuming that there is a next turn, um, they will have a play to make next turn. That, again, is assuming that there is a next turn. I'm just not so sure there will be. So, Bran being forced to banish this card, the Sinful Spoils of Subversion, is a little unfortunate. I think Bran would have much preferred to banish, say, the Field Spell, but it's something. Man, that was rude. Nightmare Phoenix not to pop that thing. Hmm. Alright, well, it just comes down to if 8,000 attack points will end up on the board or not. I mean, that's really it, right? Am I understanding this correctly? Because I don't know that Plunder Patrol really have any quick effect summons, do they? Provided no Nibiru, they can OTK, but that's an if. The OTK isn't guaranteed 100% like it is in paper with a Raging Phoenix. That is true, that is true. Okay. I believe the Master Blaze, so... Uh, okay, Promethean Princess gets back Flamberg. How much attack do we have on the field right now? 7,300? Hmm. Rixia wants that spot in top eight. Okay, Ambler Whale. Still at 7,300. Okay, yeah, this is the damage needed. Should be, assuming that there's no Nibiru. That Bellstar gets summoned, and yeah, we've gotten straight into the battle phase. So, as cool as it was to see Plunder Patrol, unfortunately, F's in chat, guys. We, wow, is this BM? Is this BM? Oh, that's BM. Crossout Designator and Battle Phase calling Nibiru. Good stuff to Rixia. Man, would have been cool to see a, a Plunder Patrol deck make it into top 8. But congrats regardless. Zerglander unfortunately takes the L and they will not be playing in top 8. With Plunder Patrol. F's in chat. I am sad. The cross out was a little dirty. Didn't have to add that in, but you yeah, know. <sighs> sad face. 
Yes, it's letting him know, yeah, even if you had Nibiru, you were not gonna come back from this one. There was no, no way out. Well, things happen. It's okay, we do still get to watch, uh, hopefully exciting top eight regardless. Cross on Designator lets the player banish a copy of a card from their deck to negate that card's effects for the rest of the turn. So, if even if Zerglinator had used Nibiru, um, their opponent still could use Cross Out Designator, banish a Nibiru from their deck, and negate that Nibiru, and still OTK them. So is their way of letting them know, yeah, uh, you weren't winning either way. Unfortunate, but it's okay. So now we're about to cut to our top eight matches. These are going to be best two out of three, and the rounds will be 45 minutes. The players are allowed to change decks between games. Entire decks, which might sound a little crazy, but it actually works out pretty well. It allows for some interesting strategies. where you can actually have a deck for maybe going second versus going first and stuff like that. All right, let me change the stream title. Let people know it's top eight. So the people know. All right, you guys, you ready for top eight? Let's get hyped up for some high quality, higher level Yu-Gi-Oh play today. Everybody like the stream, of course, if you're here and you're watching, I would appreciate it. It surfaces it to a few more people the more people who like the stream, the more you get you, 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 YouTube will show the Yu-Gi-Oh to people. It does work. It actually does work. If enough people like it right now, we might even get to 300 viewers. That'd be pretty cool. We're about to watch top eight of the Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel Challenger Cup. 128 players went in. Only eight have come out. So I should be getting the bracket any moment now. Yeah, okay. So, I've got the bracket. It's going to be Sanders Yu-Gi-Oh! versus Brixia, who we just watched. Sanders was playing that really kooky burn strategy. I'm interested in seeing how that goes. Also, Prince versus Pleiades. Oh, so the Pleiades Vanquishol player actually still managed to make it into the top cut. And then Foster Cubed versus Eclipse. We watched some of Foster Cubed's games as well. This should be exciting. Okay, so I want to watch Pleiades for sure. They're playing Vanquish Soul. You know, I got to get me that Vanquish Soul action. Vanquish Soul, you know. And I definitely want to watch Sanders because if they are actually piloting a Magic Cylinder deck in top eight and they somehow end up winning this, oh my god. That'll be insane. This whole roof's coming off. Team APS being like decayed. I kind of feel like it. Is that, what is he like? I'm not. I, I, I never watched too much of the, the dueling stuff, so. Could probably afford to watch a little bit more Duel Links myself. But yeah, Banquet Soul can, can put up a showing here. I would certainly be happy. Alright. Here we go. Prince versus Pleiades. As I found out yesterday, it's Pleiades, not. Ple Pleiades, right? Think. Anyway, okay. So Prince versus Pleiades. 
We know Pleiades is on Vanquished Soul, although I guess they don't necessarily have to be for this entire match. This is best two out of three. Top eight starting. Let's get it up to 300 likes if we can. It would be really cool if you're watching the stream. I would certainly appreciate it. And yeah. Who's going first? Pleiades is going first. Turn one, main phase one, thinking carefully about their plays. I do play the Vanquish Soul deck myself, so I might be able to provide at least a small smidgen more valuable commentary this time around. Like I said, I'm not that great at Yu-Gi-Oh! commentary. I'm just trying my best here, okay? Be nice, all right? Sheesh. Thank you guys for liking the stream, of course, as well. Really helps out. I mean, this is live, I think. Are they? Are there some connection issues, or are these players thinking? Not really sure what's going on. Okay. All right. First card played. Vanquish Soul Rosin Normal Summon in the central column. The columns can matter with this card. All right. Prince goes ahead and activates Max C. That's not too big of an issue for Vanquish Soul, but it does change a few things. Or it would. Ash Blossom gets used against Max C. That's okay. I have a whole thesis on like whether or not I want to. Um, use Ash on Maxi when I play Vanquish Soul, but I'll just start by saying that it's generally good to, especially if you have more fire monsters in your hand besides this. Because, like, if Ash was the only other fire in your hand, then, like, you can ensure that Zhao Long gets, like, a search this turn, and that kind of stifles, like, the fires and stuff. But this is still not too bad. It just depends on if he has another fire in hand. Like, if he has another fire in hand, then, like, making, um, Rock of the Vanquisher and getting the Surge and all that is, like, totally clear. So we're gonna find out. Anyways, he uses Vanquish Soul Rosin's effect to protect it from being destroyed, and that lets him summon Vanquish Soul Zhao Long from the hand. Yep, okay, as expected, he's going to link off Vanquish Soul Rosin, presumably to make Rock of the Vanquisher. Here, Rock of the Vanquisher can use its effect and get back Vanquish Soul Roz into the hand. Now that alongside the Ash Blossom that was in the hand would have meant a free search for Xiao Long. But if there's already another fire monster in the hand then it won't actually matter and Xiao Long can get that free search regardless. Kari Wonderland. Hi, I like your um commentary. <laughs> Greetings for, from a European fan of Challenger Cups. Yeah, Europe's had the Challenger Cups for a little minute now. So, we're only just getting them in the United States. Okay, so fortunately he did have another fire card. Curry Kara Div Incarnate. That's a card I was running in Vanquish Soul for a bit. I'm not currently running it because I, it's sometimes a little tough to use, but he did have it. And I don't disagree with the idea of running it in general. So, yeah, we're going to use Xiao Long. Get a search of Vanquish Soul Snow Devil. Always a fun card. Then Pot of Desires to banish 10 and draw 2. Because Ash... Did not come up. He's actually got a nice bit of cards in the hand. Okay. Return Zhao Long to the hand for Heavy Borger. You can use Heavy Borger's draw. We haven't used Prosperity or anything like that. But instead, we go for the 1,500 points of burn. Also, totally a viable thing to do. I mean, if you think about it, it might even be better to do that. You've got enough cards in your hand right now, it sounds like, to use Snow Devil. So, the 1,500 points of burn is actually a nice little form of pressure on the opponent. You'd be surprised how many games you can uh, manage with just Heavy Borger burn damage. And, all the while, he did not play into Nibiru. Which you gotta be super duper careful of when you're playing Bank of Soul. They do not recover super well from that. Okay, on standby. Pleiades activates Max C. And Prince starts off with Harpy's Feather Duster. So this is going to force the activation of Vanquish Soul Snow Devil, the trap card that can reveal Vanquish Souls and summon one from hand and destroy stuff and protect them and all that fun stuff. It also deals a little bit more burn damage, which can be kind of scary if you're not careful. How many are going to be revealed? There's an earth. There's a fire. Okay, just an earth and a fire. 
So it's going to deal a total of, what is it, 1,000 damage? And then they can choose to summon a Vanquish Soul monster from hand. Probably, probably going to go ahead and do that. Please is thinking, though. Worth knowing that Rock of the Vanquisher also has an effect to summon a Vanquish Soul monster from hand, like as a quick effect in the opponent's turn. Okay, so they go with Xiao Long. A good call. Now, while Xiao Long's in the field, it can get a search here, but that might not even necessarily be what they choose to do. There are a lot of matchups where, especially when I don't know what's going on, I like, I don't exactly know the matchup. I will sometimes actually hold on to um, Xiao Long's effect to switch a monster. However, Pleiades chooses not to because we know he's got two fire monsters in his hand, Kurikara and Razin. So he's going to aim for a search. And also, Prince Chains, Scareclaw Kashtira. Now remember, Maxi was used earlier this turn. Meaning, if Prince wants to, you know, just special summon stuff, then, um, well, they'll have to try to actually, like, win the game this turn. That's not always easy against Vanquish Soul. Otherwise, you're going to be giving them a load of cards to work with. Still, though, it is worth noting that most of Vanquish Soul's threats are, like, kind of gone now. They basically have... Caesar Valius, which can come out and, like, do pops and stuff, so that's one thing. But other than that, it's just Rosin, which can be played around just depending on the zones that it's placed in. So, okay. Kastira Theosis and Caesar Valius gets chained. Gonna bounce Zhao Long back to the hand. Ah, Prince decides to use their maxi as well. You know what? I think I actually commented one of Prince's games. Uh, last week. Last week's Master Duel Cup. Okay, so. Mr. Valius comes down. That's gonna net Prince a draw. Castera Theosis resolves. It's gonna get to summon. Any other Cash Tira card, but, um... He goes for Unicorn. Yeah, Caesar could have stopped Theosis, actually. That is true. I'm surprised that they didn't, but maybe there's a reason. Because, yeah, if you... As long as you can destroy the Cash Tira card that's being targeted by Theosis, they just won't be able to summon anything else. All right, since the uh, effect was activated, Unicorn's going to get to banish a card from the extra deck. Against Vanquish Soul, this really is not that big of a deal, but, you know, you still take what you can get. Rosin Searching. Searches Heavy Borger to hand. This is actually pretty crucial, because since Heavy Borger is already in the field, um, that might have been the only copy that, like, Pleiades had. So now that there's a second Heavy Borger, it means that it's another way to escape targeting effects... That sort of thing. You can recycle Rosin for next turn. It's a dark in hand as well. So, by revealing both, Rosin destroys everything in the column. So, Scareclaw Cashier is going to go. And that's also going to prevent... Oh, man. Everything's going now. It's also going to prevent an Xyz summon. At least immediately. Who knows what else. Yeah, this seems like this is just going to be a a dub for for Pleiades. At least that's that's the the vibe. So both cards are gone. Heavy Burger deals fifteen hundred more damage. Triple Tactics Thrust. I don't know that really anything can save Prince here. I mean, even if they were to get like say a Raigeki or a Lightning Storm. It wouldn't really um, be able to destroy cards because the Vanquish Souls are protected this turn. We've got Triple Tactics Thrust. Um, Thrust is alright. It doesn't target, though. That's... That, uh, 
It isn't target, so like Heavy Burger can't save a card if he wanted to take a monster. Probably gonna... Yeah, okay. Decides to take a monster. Takes Heavy Burger. Summons Rise Heart. Oh, interesting play here. Okay. So they're gonna just try to make Rise Heart level 7 and just maybe go for like a... He's summon, I guess. Oh yeah, I forgot. Theosis can get one of these cards back. Preparations. Alright, so... Now that Rise Heart's level 7... There's probably going to be an Xyz summon, and I'll just end the turn. Like, it'd be nice to be able to go into battle phase, but rock means that you can't even swing over, like, rock or rosin. You'll have to attack Caesar Valius, and that's 3k, so... That won't really work. Okay. So, we are Xyz summoning... Number 11, Big Eye. See, this doesn't... Mm, mm, okay. So, Big Eye can target a monster and take it, but as we saw earlier, Heavy Burger is in the hand, which will return Caesar Valleys to the hand, getting rid of Big Eye's target, and now it's just kind of like, well... Yeah, that's that. Okay. So, Prince surrendered, and that's game one to Pleiades. Um, let's have a look at Rixia versus Sanders. Mostly because I want to know if Sanders is still playing this burn deck. This magic cylinder burn deck. Heavy Borger does sound funny. It's fun to say. Alright. So we're going to catch up on this replay. In real time. Snake Eye turn. Fast forwarding. Yes, yes, the snake eye things, they're happening. Okay. <clears throat> so we're back to real time. That last duel went so fast, I guess the, the snake eye turn still couldn't end in that time. Yeah, that was kind of checkmate due to Borger laying on a lot of damage. It'd be foolish to walk. Uh, Shangri Era into Caesar because then they just burn for game next turn. All very true. Is this best of three? This is best of three. This is top eight, guys, so all these matches are best of three. If you're enjoying the stream, make sure you drop a like. And also, I know a lot of you guys are lurking, so even if you haven't said anything at all, just say hi in the stream. Let me know that you're here. You don't have to necessarily chat, but I would appreciate hearing your voice. And by hearing your voice, I mean, hey, Milk Bubble. I was actually, uh, you're in the tournament, right? Are or were? I thought I saw your name in top eight. It is the same person. But yeah, if you're lurking in the stream, just say hi in chat. Let me know that you're here. It makes me feel less alone. You know, it's more fun that way. And I say hear you, but I guess it's really like see you because the internet. But you get the idea. <laughs> hi in chat. Yeah. I know that sometimes watching these games can be a really, like, tense experience, so it's fun to just have people kind of, you know, chatting it up, seeing what's going on in the Yu-Gi-Oh! world outside of just the game that we're watching, and make this experience more fun for me and more fun for all of you. Logan Click, Mason Atkins, Tepi Popo? Moo Cow, Commander Frost, Oshin Wilson, Tiger, Somebody Lucky. Okay, yeah, Milk Bubble Tea. I'm assuming Milk Bubble Tea, so you just won 2-0. Well, congratulations. I'm uh, going to watch your game next, then. I didn't know you were actually watching the stream. I appreciate that. Oh, you're new here. Clipped you. 
What brought you to the stream? What's goid? Says E2 Blom. I'm sure you meant what's good, but maybe it's like, what's goid? What's goid chat? Hmm? Hmm. Okay, so Sanders, I think, is still on a burn strat. They distributed off IP for Volcanic Queen. So Volcanic Queen and Lava Golem are both just hanging out on this field. All right. I know I'm not supposed to take sides in this debate, but press 1 if you want to see this burn deck beat Snake Eyes. And you think that would be really funny, because I really do. I want to see someone feel the burn. Two Lava Golems and a Volcanic Queen? We need this. We need this. This 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 is justice. Now, will this actually happen? Hard to say. I, I legitimately think that Snake Eyes still probably just out tears this, but I believe that Sanders can take a game. Sanders is undefeated in this tournament up to now, so like It's totally possible. Okay. So I know Lava Golem burns a thousand in standby. When does Volcanic Queen burn? Okay, it's once per turn during the end phase, tribute one other monster or take a thousand damage. So that does let them, uh. That does let them get rid of the Lava Golem. Kind of unfortunate. Maybe it is fortunate. I mean, I don't know. You don't want Lava Golem actually attacking you. So yeah, standby phase, Lava Golem deals a thousand. And now it's main phase, they're linking them off. They're making Hita. Oh, how rude. Hita is the rudest thing you can do against another burn deck, though. So many fire monsters, and now Hita just like, is getting to summon a free Lava Golem back. Oshin says, the more I see the same deck, the more I want to learn more about beating it, if that makes sense. That makes perfect sense, actually. Like, that that's totally makes sense. Like, don't get me wrong. I know, like, you know, I give Snake Eye a hard time. It's, like, the best deck and all. But I do enjoy playing it, like, playing against it, because, like, you get to try out different stuff against it. Like, right now in Master Duel, if you just hop on rank, there's a very high chance you'll just queue up against Snake Eye. And that means that you do get to, um... You do get to, like test different strategies against it and see what wins and loses and you can be certain that even if you lose to one the next person you play will probably be snake eyes you know what i forgot that gerbigus is right when you summon back that lava golem you do lock yourself out of a normal summon for the turn i wonder if rixia knew that you're in plat right now it's the wild west okay yeah i'm not too surprised to hear that platinum is a bit of a a mix of things I know for me and like Diamond and or Master Rank, it's a lot of Snake Eye. There's other stuff too, but it's a lot of Snake Eye. What decks have you guys been seeing in Master Duel Ranked lately? Like, I always assume that my experience is everybody's experience, but that's not really true. Because, like in Diamond and stuff, yeah, it's Snake Eye City. But it sounds like like the Trucks, for instance, that you're just kind of seeing the Wild Wild West. What is the Wild Wild West in terms of Master Duel right now? Mainly Snake Eyes and Tier Laments, occasional Stun. Yeah, you, uh, Stun shows up a lot, too. I think people get so tired of Snake Eye, they just feel like they need to play, like, D-Fissure, Fossil Dyna, and just to call it a day. Okay. Let me try to focus back in on this. Trap Trick and Ceasefire. And then Chain Strike. Weird game, but cool at the same time. Yeah, this is Burn against Snake Eye. So, I, I mean, I'm rooting for, for Burn. It's just that, like, I, I somehow feel like this might not actually work out. Uh, what are we getting with Trap Trick? That determines a lot. The Nightmare deck? What is the Nightmare deck? Uh, they got Ring of Destruction. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so Sanders got a ring of destruction. That can't win them the game right here. But um I mean it'll be damage. 
See, the thing with burn is, like, I mean, they, they just have to go strictly for damage. Like, there's no other... There's no other line of play. Like, these two cards have to do enough burn damage to win the game. So, you kind of have to use ring now and then just... Hmm. Ring will do... Okay, well, I was going to say ring will do 3,000. He 100% has Bahama in hand. Better. This isn't so bad. Okay, so Nightmare Phoenix pitches Lightning Storm. Obviously, you know, Sanders is going to chain Ring of Destruction. Targets Nightmare Phoenix. That's only 1,900, though. It gets destroyed. Both players take 19. Okay. Ambla Whale vanishes. Gets to destroy a card in the field. Destroys Poplar. So Poplar uses its effect. Puts Flamberg in the back row. Sets a card. And in phase. All right. So it all comes down to what Sanders has in his hand right now. He's got to have some way to burn 2,500. And I fear that he might not. Come on, burn. We need you to... Okay. This is a good one. Pot of Desires, good card. I don't know if that was a top deck. I assume so. But, um, yeah. So Pot of Desires. Banish 10. Draw 2. With burn decks, you need every last just raw card you can get. He sets two, and he passes. Burn, 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 burn. I just want to see at least one game, one to burn. Even if he loses the entire thing, just, you know. Something. Master Blaze. To continue the learning weakness discussion, learning matchups is very important because not every deck has the same weakness or choke points. For example, you wouldn't think there's a big difference between ashing Ariana or negating it with Imperm, but there is in the long game. I can definitely agree with that. I find that something that I've learned a lot more from mostly just playing Master Duel... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is this... Okay. 1400, 1400. Sanders wins. Woo! Yeah, for a second when he used like Secret Barrel and um, I saw a Link Rebo, I was like, oh, wait, does that. But then I remembered, no, it doesn't matter. It's the same amount of cards in the field. Okay. Cool. Congratulations, to Sanders. They actually take a win. A win for Burn. And I guess we'll just spectate this last game that still is happening right now. Maybe the other games are done. I'm not sure. The double secret barrel do it. But anyways, what I was saying about um that I've learned about with like just playing a lot of Master Duel is that like Imperm versus Ash is like and even versus Valor are it's three very different cards, even if they can accomplish like the same thing. So um like in the example you gave, I think that like Imperming Ariana is, in my opinion, like generally better than like Ashing Ariana. And it's just because, for me, I like keeping Ash Blossom to use against the actual trap cards. But I think that for a lot of players, if they have both available to them, they might just haphazardly Ash Blossom Ariana, when, in my opinion, you really shouldn't be doing that too much. If you can help it, anyway. Because Ash Blossom gets way more value against the trap cards. But that's also something that, like, you don't learn unless you've played a good bit of Labyrinth. And yeah, what um, Son Goku is saying is also totally true. Because, like, afterwards, Imperm kind of starts to not really be, like, playable. If we're assuming, like, you know, the first turn of Labyrinth. Okay. Uh, what? This is Eclipse versus Foster Cubed. Don't know what game this is exactly. But it's turn two. And, oh. I don't... Okay. What deck is this? Branded, it looks like. They super poly. Or Barone negating Brand of Fusion versus Ash Blossom. Yeah, that's another really good example. Like, that's the, to me, that's the type of stuff that Master Duel has actually helped me as a player get a lot better at, is, like, recognizing, um... 
which negations or disruptions to use against like what card because it's not all like one to one like ash is not baylor is not imperm is not insert other kind of negation card but if you kind of play them haphazardly and just assume that they are you can run into some problems It's so wild to me that, like, just even when... <laughs> even when Flamberg gets, like, super polyed away or whatever, it still just gets its effect. It's just insane. Jeez, just get back Oak, get back Ash. Oak recycles, Ash searches. Like, man. The Snake Eye deck is insane. Alright, Bissu Labellion. The Snake Eyes deck would be perfectly fair without Flamberg. Yeah, I... We were talking about this earlier in chat. Um, you know, that, that'd be a good poll question. We'll do a little poll. If you could ban only one Snake Eyes card, what would it be? And the options will be... Flamberg... Is it Flamberg or Flameberg? That's a good question. Yeah, Flamberg, I thought so. Okay. Poplar. Divine Temple. Original Sinful. Okay. This will be my poll. I don't think these are necessarily the four best, like, answers, but... Because, I mean, I guess you could put Ash on there. Uh, the thing is, I don't think Konami's banning any of these cards, to be fair. Like, if they had to hit Snake Eyes, I don't think any of this stuff's getting banned. I think that, like, some stuff will get limited, though. I would like to see, like, one Flamberg, and maybe one Poplar. I think that would really crunch the deck down a bit, but... Just my opinion. Oh, man, the Billion gets hit by Effect Veiler. No set and free cards. I don't mind the deck floating forever, but Temple Place Flamberg and validating stuff like Nibiru is too much. Totally agreed. The amount of Nibirus I watched flounder against Snake Eye over the last week now is kind of insane. Like, it really is. I mean, like, it just means that they Nibiru you and you don't care. You continue. Yatsmugi says, if you hit Diabell or Wanted, it stops being splashed in every deck. Plus, they have to choose between Original and the Field spell. So, I was thinking something kind of like that. But, I wouldn't be surprised if Diabell, Star, and Wanted stay safe because they're like... And this, is, this sounds like a silly reason, but like, hear me out. The reason I feel like um, Wanted and Diabell, Star, and probably even Original Sinful Spoils are safe from a ban list... It's probably just because, like, they're, like, the lore archetype, and that alone seems like something that could happen. Plus, like, you know, there you are, but, um, so I was thinking about this kind of in a TCG context as well. Just, like, the lore, kind of primary lore stuff, I could see it being less likely to get hit as opposed to, like, Snake Eye is just, like, one archetype in that kind of overall set of lore, so maybe they... It's weird. Konami, like, works weirdly like that. And, like, I don't think that anything that Diabell Star or Wanted is doing is bad. I really do find, like, Poplar and Flamberg to be more... Like, they feel more obnoxious to me. Now, granted, this is coming from a, a more, like, kind of middling player. I'm not so informed about this deck. Like, I don't play it myself personally. I've just played against it a lot. And those seem like the cards that kind of do the most is like Poplar and Flemberg just recycling so many cards. Divine Temple like playing around the Biru and recycling cards and kind of just keeping an advantage thing going. Those cards feel more 
troubling to me than like Wanted and even original Sinful Spoils. So, just my take on it, however. And I think that they wouldn't want to hit like Diabell Star or anything, because again, she's she's the highlight new monster. She's the Fallen of Albaz, she's the Visa Star Frost. So thematically they may not want to hit her. Anyways, I've kind of been losing track of this duel, but it looks like, uh, it might be turning around. Oh, never mind. Opelos is here. It's not turning around. Yeah, basically what, um, what Master Blaze is saying. Like, I'm fine with Diabell Star and, like, Original Sinful. I don't think that they're so bad. Um, and other decks with her don't really feel broken. It's just that Snake Eyes, that, that Snake Eyes just advantage flow is so that recursion is that's the worst part to me oh my goodness tribute summoning for dogmatica maximus is that what i just saw what wow hmm things have taken a turn Ban Bow of the Goddess. Okay, that's a question I would like to hear. Okay, well, first of all, in our poll right now, everybody vote in this poll what Snake Eye card would you ban? Most people seem to agree that Flamberg's kind of a thing, but um, Poplar gets second place. I I agree with the Flamberg thing. If I had like hit something, that would probably be it. But here's a good poll, and I want everyone to 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 uh to weigh in here. I have heard this one second I've heard this sentiment more and more from between both like casual and more competitive players Opelosa Bow of the Goddess how do we feel about this card should it be banned and think seriously about this like I'm not saying it as like a just I'm just salty about Opelosa thing but like do you think that Opelosa is, like, a healthy card? Do you think that it is not a healthy card? Should it be banned? Should it not? I mentioned what chat says. I have a hunch, and I have not looked at the, the polls yet, that most people will say no, but I have been hearing more and more people kind of suggest that it should. So, what do you think? It obviously can be like a way of hitting Snake Eye right now, but I think that in general it would change the dynamic of a lot of different decks in the game. Because a lot of decks use Opelosa. It's just been a huge part of deck building, or particularly extra deck building, for a while now. Can help decks get around Nibiru, sure. Sets up, you know, multiple monster negations. L allows a lot of pile decks to kind of just turn warm bodies into an Opelosa, and that can be a little bit wild. How do we feel about it? Okay, so according to the poll, 63% of you guys say no, Opelosa should not be banned. Okay. But 35% say yes. So for the people who say uh, yes or no, really, justify your answer a little bit. I'm not saying that anyone's right or wrong here. Like, obviously this isn't, you know, this isn't, like, Konami's not making the ban list based on this poll that we have. So it's okay, just share your opinions on it. Oh, now it's 40-60. Okay, so Yatsumugi says, Opelosa is a healthy card, it's just that Snake Eye gets it out almost for free. Fair. Leon R says, I feel like four negates is too much, so I voted yes. Um, Moo Cow says, would more so like to see it errata than ban. What errata would you want on it? Ice Age, these generic boss monsters need to go. Every new deck that comes out makes the same suspects. Why make new archetypes when we all into the same board? Master Blaze, I'm fed up with generic um, bosses that outclass in archetype bosses. I 110% agree with that, by the way. It just homogenizes the extra deck, making new archetypes feel like reskins, only defined by their playstyle and not their board. Gerbigas says, Opelosa isn't the problem. She's easy to out or outplay. The problem is IP Mascarena. Okay. Yeah, I've heard I've heard some people say that too. So, my stance on it, and again, this is my stance. I'm willing to have my mind changed, and I'm not saying that this is like the end all of any of this. 
because I'm not the one making these ban lists, so, you know, just gonna keep in mind. Um, don't shoot the messenger here. I, I do not like generic extra deck monsters very much myself either. I think that they do homogenize, you know, the extra deck experience. That's Opelosa mainly, but also Barone and like Borload Savage, IP Mascarena. Honestly, feels like one. Even stuff like Access Code Talker, if you want to kind of stretch it really far. Um, it's like it's interesting because I don't think that like Opelosa's concept for an effect is even that bad. It's just that in practice, it ends up being pretty rough. Like. In, in theory, I like that, you know, she has to lose attack points. She's like a modern-day light and darkness dragon, right? But it's just any amount of warm bodies can make her, and so any deck can make her. And then, like, with Snake Eye in particular, warm bodies is kind of their thing. I do agree with the comment that said, like, um, IP Masquerina might be more of the real problem here. Because it's like a quick effect, and then it makes it indestructible, and it can be made with any cards. There's a lot of things, so... Let's see, Yatsumugi says, if Opelosa gets banned, Snake Eye just moves on to going Goddess every turn in place of Opelosa, and they can still get two Omni Negates on top of that. DBZ Song Goku says, uh, funny thing about all these arguments is that these plays are only possible because of Flamberg. Hey, I hear ya! Oh, oh, actual time limit win cool well congrats to foster cube he managed to pull out a win never a big fan of watching those time limit wins have to happen that way but so it goes anyway though um yeah like that's a good point too is that like flamberg is what um kind of ultimately allowing snake eyes to do all this so if we want to focus more on snake eyes the deck as opposed to like the opelosa problem then I would say, um... Oh, it looks like they just finished. I'm gonna watch this. I don't know if that was game two or three. I've seen a lot of time limit losses today, and I don't really like that. You can say what you... Like I said, you can say what you want about, like, combo or stun or control or whatever, toxic floodgates, this and that, but nobody really likes a time limit win, at least I certainly don't. But anyways, yeah, like, I mean, I think if you want to focus more so on the Snake Eye thing, then I agree that Flamberg is the real, like, issue here. Like, if you want to just focus on them and not, like, Opelosa or Underworld Goddess or IP, because, like, Flamberg is what's giving them all the warm bodies. Livia's gameplay, if only there was more time. Can we buff time? We were actually talking about this earlier in chat. Like, does... Master Duel give enough time and it's kind of just default time thing. And I was saying that I think the 300 seconds thing is fine, but I think that they should increase the amount of time that you get whenever the turn passes. Because currently you get 60 seconds on your turn, 30 seconds on their turn. I think it'd be nice to get 60 seconds on their turn and 90 seconds on yours. That would be kind of cool. A little more time to make decisions, a little more time for grindier or more like interactive kind of back and forthy decks. Oh man, Topologic Trisbana against Burn. That's brutal, man. That's brutal. Totally forgot about this, Vayna. Okay, so Sanders did lose this game against Rixia. Flamberg is block dragon at home. Feels like it, not gonna lie. Idea, ban Link Karibo. How do we feel about banning Link Karibo? I forgot, I should have asked about that. There's a question. Oh. 
Okay, top four is about to start. So, top four is happening, and unfortunately, <clears throat> it does seem like our friend Sanders lost the round itself. So, it's going to be Rixia versus Milk Bubble Tea, who was actually just in chat. Want to have a look at this game? And Foster Cubed, who's been really tearing it up in these Master Duel events lately. And Pleiades. 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 One of them. So we'll start off by watching this duel, and then I think we'll hop onto Milk Bubble Tea's match against Rixia. This is top four, guys. So these are the four duelists remaining. Foster Cubed, Milk Bubble Tea, Rixia, and Pleiades. Who do we want to win? Well... I mean, I certainly would not mind a Vanquish Soul dub, but I really think that all four of these players deserve it. So, you know, whoever gets it, they earned it. It ain't hard. Er, it ain't hard. It ain't easy playing um, in, I feel like, these sort of tournament settings. You've got time to worry about. Your opponent can play multiple decks. It's rough either way is, all, is what I'm trying to say. Glad I was able to get top eight. Congratulations, the Super Smash Show. You were in top eight. Good stuff. What about limiting Pot of Prosperity, though? How do people feel about Pot of Prosperity in the TCG? Like, Master Duel has just been kind of limiting these pots left and right. But how do TCG players feel right now about um, Prosperity? I have heard... I've heard some players express that they want that card limited or even banned. But then, like, whenever that comes up, people are like, what? Pot of Prosperity is fine. So how do we feel about it? Oh, Sanders is in chat. Cool. Sorry, y'all. I did my best with Burn. Unfortunately, I played Rixia and Swiss, so they knew to switch to a Trisbaner in their deck for top cut. GG's to Rixia, though. They pivoted well. Smart, smart. Yeah, I was wondering when I saw the Trisbaner, I was like, I guess that since the decks can change, that they could put a Trisbaner in to deal with Burn. And, and they did. But still, congratulations. You did really, really well. You were super hyped to watch. We got to watch uh, Burn get into top eight. Undefeated, by the way. So, nothing to be ashamed of at all. Good stuff. You know, I wouldn't mind Link Rebo being banned. I know some people don't think it'll get banned because it looks on paper to be like such a fine, fair card. But it does let them play through a lot, especially as the game gets grindier. They get to start dodging targeting effects and clearing their field off for things. It's all kind of just... Mm, it would be a pretty painless hit because like, there aren't really any other decks besides Snake Eyes that are like making liberal use of Link Karibo. But anyways, what are people saying about Pot of Prosperity? Blue Ruin Pots for everybody in Master Duel. A little bit. I mean, I think Pot of Prosperity, like, the more that you play against good decks in Yu-Gi-Oh!, like, kind of higher tier decks, the more scary Pot of Prosperity feels to me. Because, um... Ooh, does he have a Vanquish Soul to switch into? It's not. Oh. Yeah, but the more, like, you realize, like, a single card can mean everything in Yu-Gi-Oh!, like, if you think about it, right? A single copy of, like say bonfire or ash can lead to a whole snake eye combo it suddenly for me at least puts part of prosperity into perspective because it's like suddenly you realize one card can change it all and so a card that digs six deep to see that card oh it's pretty crazy and um like son goku said after side decking like prosperity digging six deep means like Boom, I get to see the Floodgate. Boom, I get to see the Board Breaker. Like, boom, I get to see the one hand trap that would, like, cut off your deck. I can see the draw for next turn. I can see whatever. So, I think in that way, Prosperity really can feel pretty obnoxious. I'm not, I don't even know that it's, like, you know, priority number one in terms of, like, things that must get hit now. But I totally understand what people mean when they say, like, it's a little nuts. I mean, I even get what people mean when they say, like, Triple Tactics Talents is, is nuts. I, I think, like, some people don't see it as an issue, but the more I play, the more I'm like, man, when Talents gets to look at your hand and get that knowledge and take a card out, punishing you for just playing, like, a hand trap, it's, it's pretty rude. Like, we've got some powerful staple spells in the game today, and I don't think they get talked about enough. 
I don't believe that banning cards the way, even Snake Eyes. Why would you make them in the first place? Limited is enough. Interesting fancy font. Yeah, like, I mean, they could, like, Snake Eyes... Snake Eyes is, like... I don't think that you need to, like, ban Snake Eyes cards. I think that if you limited Flamberg and, like, limited Poplar, we could kind of nip this in the bud with stuff like that. But, um... You know, I'm just saying that there are situations where, like, banning one card can actually make for a, um... So, I'm gonna explain, a, a, like, an idea I have around that whole, like, banning a card versus, like, limiting or semi-limiting cards. Um... I take my words. So, like, basically, if you can nip a deck in the bud by banning a card, you can maybe take it out of commission and keep the ban list kind of, like, neater and tidier. Or you can limit and semi-limit cards to kind of break a deck down in terms of consistency and, like, loops and stuff. But, um... It maybe makes for like a, a sloppier ban list, like a sloppier deck build. Like, oh, this is at two, this is at one, this is at one, this one's at two, that's at one. So, I'm not saying one's better than the other, but sometimes like banning a single card to hit a deck might be a, like a faster, cleaner way of doing it. Like nipping it in the bud versus just death by a thousand cuts. But yeah, I think in general, I don't like. I see why a person might be ban might be opposed to bans as a concept because like why make the card if you're literally going to ban the card it should at least be like limited all right let's focus on this game for a sec because we got uh vanquish soul on the on the board and you know i like that Pleiades, bur burning for 1500. This is looking like a pretty good position to be in for Vanquishol. When I play Vanquishol, I hate the Snake Eyes matchup just in general, so. Um, this is the best position I've seen someone in against it all day. And it's not like a great one or anything. Yeah, playing in a maxi is scary with Vanquish Soul. They don't have enough cards, in my opinion, to deal with any extra advantage Snake Eye gets. Snake Eye gets. What's a fun question we can throw into the polls? What does the chat want to vote on? I want your suggestions. Comment them. We will set up a poll and we can talk. Pleiades has nerves of steel going for burn. I draw 99% of the time. Yatsumugi, you and I are kindred spirits. I, I was thinking the same thing. I didn't really want to say it. But, like, that's like nerves of steel. I totally agree. Like, I always go for card advantage. I'm just, like, card advantage pilled. But, like, I... I <laughs> Going for, like, the, the burn adds up. Like, it's not like it's, like, an objectively wrong thing. But, man, I, I tell you, I, I want my draws. I hope that the burn can pay off. Because nothing's worse than when you lose and you feel like, um, if you'd have drawn more as opposed to burn. Like, burn only matters when the game actually ends, if that makes sense. So that's why I'm always like, I'd rather just get the card and save the burn for when I know I've got them under, like, 1,500 or, like, under 3,000 or whatever. Just my stance, though. Like, it seems nerve-wracking, is all I'm saying. Jesus Christ, why does Poplar just get its effect even when it's like destroyed by battle? Like, come on. And like, how many ways does this godforsaken card have to come back to the field? I 
Okay. This isn't a bad spot. Ooh, God, another special summon. Uh... <laughs> I know, Rock of the Vanquisher is good, but man. Okay, what pull are we going to do? Master Roll 6 suggestions? I can do that, right? Okay, I'm going to try this. Yeah, like this is fine now because um with Snow Devil, they can Snow Devil's um 1800 and oh. Mm. Do they still have all the I haven't been keeping track of the attributes in hand. Summon Rosin off the trap and search. Yeah, this should be able to just to, to do um 33 assuming that it all works out we'll see I'm not calling anything yet there's one thing I've learned these games aren't over till they're over but I think this should be able to deal 33 and just win within the next turn Vanquishol makes my soul ache. You don't like Vanquishol. What's wrong with Vanquishol? I'd rather win versus Snake Eye. Okay. You don't have to love Vanquishol, but as long as you know uh, your heart's in the right place. Oh, it dodges everything. I mean, it's fun. I think Vanquishol is it's interactive. Dodging is better than just telling your opponent they can't do anything. Like, I'd honestly, I mean, as far as annoying decks go, I find Vanquishol's pretty tame. Dodging targeting effects, like, eh. It's good, don't get me wrong, but you know. Destroying cards in every column is rude. Uh, people play around that column destruction pretty consistently. Now, when you get it off, it feels nice, but, you know. Yeah, I'm with Grand Harrier. Vanquishol is a good modern Yu-Gi-Oh design. Fits the theme of playing on opponent's turn, but in a fair way. Versus the best deck ever printed. Hansa Moody's got tastes. I approve. I very much approve. It's a Cardinal Synod. They haven't released a Vanquish Soul mat in the TCG. Or have they? I know the OCG's got one. I want to get the OCG one, but it's a little bit messy looking. If, if it's the one that I'm thinking of. You're salty about it? I mean, fair. It's fair. I would suggest play Vanquish Soul yourself, and you might begin to respect it more. Because even though they can dodge and run from stuff, it doesn't always work out that way. Anywho. Alright, looks like this game's gonna probably end, because Rosin should be able to get Borger if it isn't already, like, in the hand. And that should be enough to win. Please tell me it is. Yeah, this should be enough to burn. Just gotta make sure that this all goes off without a hitch. Because there's a lot of things that can still technically go wrong here. So I'm not calling it until I see that heavy Borger resolve. Okay. Jane Borger. Okay. The card has been obtained, and now it does not matter. Probably. Right? Borger effect. Earth and Fire, 1,500. Woo! We got through. Right? 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 Right. Okay. Ugh, good.
Venkvasol takes a dub. Sweet. Gotta always root for those guys. Okay. So, congratulations to Pleiades. Now we're gonna hop over to Milk Tea. Milk Bubble Tea versus Rixia. We saw Milk Bubble Tea in the chat earlier. They said hi, so gotta, of course, watch the match, eh? The dramatic finish. Okay. So, this will let us catch up on their game because, uh, you know, it's gonna play. Oh, thank you, Trups. Appreciate that. Um, so, from what we know of Rixia, well, these people can be playing totally different decks now, actually. So, I don't want to call anything until I see it, but this looks like this is Labyrinth, and looks like we're facing Pearly. I have to ask the age-old question, how do you pronounce Pearly? Do you say Pearly? Pirelli? Pirelli? Someone, someone local said Pirelli, which I don't... Pretty sure it's not that. I always would say Pirelli, but people have told me that it's just Pearly. So give me your um your pronunciations in the in the uh, chat. You wanna make it a poll? I can make it a poll. Okay. How do you pronounce? Pirelli. 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 Okay. Here's the poll. You guys can vote. Let me know how you say it. Pirelli or Pearly or whatever. I, I think like I, I fixate on these things. I'm always so curious how people pronounce these cards because apparently I'm just awful at pronouncing cards. I say TR elements. I say Pirelli. What's the other one that I say a lot? Uh, there's one that like, I can say that always it upsets people. I used to say Machina, but I, I, I call them Machina now, and I'm pretty sure that's what most people want it to be called, right? Machina. Okay, so Rixia wins this one with Labyrinth. Don't know which game this was, though, but um, Rixia did defeat Milk Bubble Tea. So now we can hop back over to Foster Cubed and Pleiades. Machina? I'm sure it's Mach you mean Machina, right? Machina, like... I'm pretty sure it's Machina. Okay, and, and people in, in the poll are saying that it's Pearly, so... I'll, I'll try to start saying Pearly. It's gonna be a hard habit to break. I'm used to saying Pirelli. Okay, Rika or Rika? I'm pretty sure it's Rika, right? Right? Riga. Okay, Livius, you actually make a, a um You make a good point. I for a second I thought it was purely, like pure, like, like something is pure, like purely. But I'm pretty sure it's not that. Okay. If Pheromone says Rika is Rika. You glue the ka, the K sound to both sides. Rika. Rika. Yeah, okay. So I was right about Rika. Good. I've always said Rika. That's at least one thing I know. I don't know much about pronouncing Yu-Gi-Oh card names, but... Alright, let's focus on the duel here, okay? Focus on the duel. Rosin just used its effect to blow up all the monsters in the column. And switched for Heavy Borger. That actually got rid of 
Cast your Fenrir, always one of my favorite plays, actually. Caster of Fenrir is one card that Vanquish Soul does not have a lot of trouble dealing with. <laughs> Grand Hair is like, no, we have to solve this debate. I mean, it is fun. Like, I, I've never, like, I guess Konami's never going to, like, tell us formally, like, here's how you're supposed to say this card's name, right? So... It's ultimately up to you. Like, language is kind of what you make of it, how you just choose to say it. But I suppose that, like, most cards have a uh, something of an intended pronunciation. Because, like, certain wordplay only works if it's pronounced a certain way. And, like, if they design the name of the card with the wordplay in mind, then that would suggest to me that there is a correct way to pronounce it. Correct. As far as, like, correct can be. You know what I mean? Wait, how do Spanish people pronounce the cards, Illidan? I I'm curious now. You make me you're making me wonder. Master Blaze says Rika would be closer to the Japanese pronunciation, but Rika is technically more correct in English. Hmm. Rika. Rika just sounds like a weird word to say. Like, <clears throat> it's kind of, I don't want to call it like an ugly sounding word, but like Rika. Like, I don't know. It just, you know, it sounds kind of like, eh. Very offhanded, whereas Rika sounds maybe a little bit more dignified. It is fun to talk about card pronunciations. Like, it's just... Like, I mean... It hardly matters, but hey. Something that uh, I actually found out recently... Um, I have Pheromone to thank for this. Is that it's Vanquish Soul Rosin and not um, Raisin. Which I always called it Raisin because, like, well... That kind of just seems like... The English word spelled like that like would be, like, Raisin. But, um... Yeah... It is Vanquish Soul Rosin. At least I'm pretty sure it is. I mean, again, you could say whatever you want, but what do you guys think? Vanquish Soul Rosin or Vanquish Soul Raisin? We're doing a poll. I used to say Raisin. I say Rosin now. Someone said Ryzen. You know what? I should have added that to the poll. Ryzen. Because that's technically like another very valid way to say it. Sounds like most people are saying Rosin. Sorry, I should have put Ryz Raisin in. But... Ryzen. Grand Harris is rising. I think Ra like the Egyptians, so Razen. Okay. This has become the Yu-Gi-Oh card pronunciation stream, and I love it. Like, I mean... The only thing with Razen is just that it sounds... It sounds like all the other cards don't have that vibe to them like rosin it sounds like raisin sounds like what i'd expect in a fighting game i don't know maybe i think of like games like uh what's a fighting game that comes to mind yeah who knows well at any rate i was just curious so it sounds like rosin is in fact the the correct way, or at least most people agree that it is. Alright, um... I keep saying I'm gonna get back to focusing on this game, and I promise I will. I blame you for distracting me. It's all your faults.
Okay, oh, Hakurei Illusion has uh, some insights for us. In Ryzen's case, his name is the same in both the English and Japanese spelling, so I don't see a reason to pronounce it differently. That's, that, you know what? That is a fair, that is a fair rationale for it. Okay, uh, so English doesn't have set sounds for how stuff is written. German, German has had a reform to unify the language, making it so much easier to speak what you read. Oh, I didn't know that about German. Can you explain that a bit more? Like, so I guess it's the idea with German that, like, people were pronouncing things kind of so differently that they kind of are, there's been a, a movement to re-establish, like, how words are pronounced. Because if so, I, I think that sounds kind of cool. I mean, some people might feel that's, like, homogenizing too much or something, but I, I kind of like the idea of keeping people on the same page with language mostly. But I guess like kind of the, the fun of language is that there's some flair to it, so. This is actually one of my favorite um, Master Duel like finisher themes. Do you guys have a favorite Master Duel finisher theme? Like, you know, when life points are low. I, I like this music. It's pretty intense, especially when when the game doesn't act. So I love this music specifically when the duel doesn't actually end on that turn, so that this music continues into like the next turn. It just feels like way more intense and fun for me that way. Yeah, it is hard to refer to one, you're right, Livia, it's a kind of dumb question. Okay, the my favorite theme in Master Duel, because they are numbered, is theme number two. So you never hear it, it's only tied to the ancient gear field. You can look it up on YouTube or whatever. But um, yeah, the theme number two is like one of my favorites. They use it a lot early on in Master Duel, like promotional material and like little trailers and stuff. But you never really hear it very much in um in like ranked ladder or anything because nobody uses the ancient gear field. And I still think Konami that you should make a cool feature in Master Duel, like a jukebox where we can pick our background music and not have to rely on our opponents' fields. Anywho. Just saying. Okay, so. Since Pleiades has gotten his opponent down to 1500 life points, very little of this matters unless a heavy burger can be removed from the field and ideally removed from the game in general. Because, if not, then it might just be dealing 1500 damage next turn for the win regardless. So Foster Cube's in a bit of a corner here. He needs to win this turn. Wait. Oh, so that's what you meant. I saw someone say that earlier. Grand Harry. So you two, so Duel Links has like, lets you pick your music. Why doesn't Master will let you pick your music? Come on. That's crazy. I like Master Duel's music so much. Like, we should just be able to pick it, because I'm I really, really, really don't like hearing the same two it does that you need to pay for a duelist pass. I'll pay for a duelist pass. I'll pay. Like is it like is that like the same as the uh like duelist pass in um like in Master Duel, basically? Like I could pay with gems and then just be able to have my jukebox feature. Yeah, you can get the pass with gems. Okay, great. Yeah, please. Yes, Konami, please add that feature. Let me pick my background music and master duel. I'll pay you all the gems you want.
I, see, I love this. This music is really cool when it just goes on for a long time. Because it makes the duel just feel like it's it's supposed to have ended turns ago, but neither player wants to quite give up. You know, it's like turn three. But, you know, the, the tension and mood is there. Oh, the better question is why does Duel Links allow 999 favorite cards and the deck build of Mass Duel only allows like 100? There's a lot of... So this isn't like a, a knock against Mass Duel. I'm not trying to say this game sucks. It's not what I mean. But Mass Duel has some weird limitations that I, I can only chalk up to it being a newer game than Duel Links. But it's weird. Like, Master Duel, um... Master Duel, like... Duel rooms only allow 50 players, but, like, Duel Links rooms allow 100 players. And it's like, why not just increase it to 100? Like, I mean, I don't really understand. Is it a bandwidth server thing? Like, Duel Links Duel rooms are just honestly way better than Master Duel ones. You can have more people, but also you can do the thing where it automatically matches players against other players. Because, like, something, then this is, like, an issue that's maybe more exclusive to, like, me as, like, a content creator. Whenever I do, like, a Master Duel live stream, it would be really cool to be able to, like, be like, okay, chat, you guys can all, like, join this duel room, and then it'll automatically have people duel against each other. And then at the end of, like, an hour or however long you set, like, in Duel Links, you can sort of just, you'll assign points to people based on how many wins and losses they had, and everybody gets rankings, and we're all happy, and it's fun, and it's cool. But in Master Duel, you kind of just sit and, like... You know, so, I don't know, I, I think that those are, like, little features that would be good. Konami also has bigger duel rooms. They can make 500-player duel rooms. They, wait, they can make 500-player duel rooms? Oh, so, like, only Konami can do it, so if it's, like, only for official tournaments or something, I'm guessing. Hmm. Interesting, yeah, I mean, I think at least, like, allow 100 people to play. And just have a little tournament mode, or like an auto... Even if it's not like a tournament mode, just an auto continually pairing people against other people until time runs out. So it feels kind of like a Battle City mode or something. Hmm. So this is a bit of a troubling situation now. Baron de Floor has not used its negation, and we all know that it's going to save that negation for Heavy Border if it can. What is this face down card? Is that that negating trap? Because we got to get this burn damage. That's going to be rough. Mm. And please do it. Let's see. Yeah, they can just crash into Barone. I think. Am I reading that right? Wait, what does this do? This can't be destroyed by battle. Okay, so this isn't a problem. Xiao Long is going to try to force a monster into defense position. Oh, yeah, they need a Synchro to use the trap. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, a bracket mode would be really easy. Like, I, I mean, because we've seen these features work in Duel Links, so I think Master Duel definitely needs them. I know some Konami employees watching this VOD at some point... So, since they are, maybe, you guys in chat, what is the number one feature that you would like added to Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel? If you got to pick. Oh, goodness. What? Oh, is this to get an Earth? Oh, I have a hunch about what this is. Wait, so, let me make sure I'm reading everything correctly. You do this card against... Okay. Wait. Okay, that's an earth in hand. We need an earth and a fire. Okay. Earth and fire for 1500. Barone's gonna try to negate this. Oh, yeah, okay, so this was face down. I hadn't been keeping track of the cards at all. So. This is trouble. Because Barone still has its negation. Right? Right? I think so. I mean, the check mark's on here, so...
trying to pop Heavy Burger. Heavy Burger changed the effect, but I don't think the Barones negated anything. So, oh wait, okay, there's a plan here. There's a plan. Even if Barone negates this, they can, they have Caesar Valleys, they can at least bounce. They can bounce Heavy Burger. It won't get destroyed by Barone's destruction. And then the goal is just to summon it again next turn and Barone will have already used its negate. So assuming that there's no other way to get a um, a negation on the field, the damage can still be done next turn? Am I following this right? No, it won't get destroyed. It stays in the hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't worry. I played Vanquish all a lot. That's one thing I know. Bouncing them in the hand does protect them from Barone. So. I am curious why they didn't crash Caesar into Barone, but maybe there's a reason. It's so funny. This has all come down to, like, literally getting this Vanquish Soul Heavy Burger effect to resolve. And I think it should work, because even here, as long as there's one more Vanquish Soul monster in the field... Okay, and the fire is in hand for next turn, so... So I think Pleiades has this. I think Pleiades has this. Right? Main phase two. Because next turn, all they have to do is just switch any of these monsters into Heavy Burger. And Lightheart can be attacked, right? There's nothing stopping that. Pretty sure. This doesn't do anything special, huh? Okay. This has gotten way too tense for me. This is supposed to be over ages ago. You can attack, you can burn, but like, okay, all right, what's up? What's Barone doing? It's leaving. Ghost spell activates. Okay, so Pleiades is like, nope, no funny business. What was he trying to summon back? Scareclock Ashtira, okay. Alright, so I think we can just attack safely. We can try to burn. Looks like he's gonna try to burn. Alright. Effect activation. Reveal Earth and Fire 1500. And... Okay. Nice. Nice job. I think that means we have a Vanquish Soul in the finals. Chat, I think that means we have a Vanquish Soul in the finals. Congratulations to Pleiades. Well played to Foster Cubed as well. That was really entertaining, honestly. Watching them go back and forth as they just try to manage, um, try to manage to get that burn effect to work. Okay, I think you guys know what that means, huh? gonna be the finals so let me edit the title of this huh let people know that the finals are happening yep the production is just informing me they're starting the finals shortly All right, so our two finalists. Are going to be Milk Bubble Tea and Pleiades starting in just three minutes. So Pleiades is playing Vanquish Soul. Obviously, the bias in me wants Vanquish Soul to take this win. That would be really awesome and really cool and really fun. I love the deck. However, however, we will be fair and balanced in our uh, critique of this match. Because both players deserve it, and whoever duels the best will be the winner. Question, how do you get this, this border? Where does this come from? Just curious. 
Anywho, right before we start the finals, I should probably remind you guys, this is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cup for the United States. 128 players came in, or went in, only 8 came out, and now only 2 stand remaining in the finals. These are some free Master Duel tournaments that you can enter every weekend. Konami is hosting these on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And you can win really cool prizes like this Master Duel hoodie that yours truly is wearing. Maybe even a cutesy little rescue rabbit plush. They've got a lot of these that they're giving away. And even Master Duel jackets. They've got... Where are they? I know I have them here. They've got sleeves. These are the white sleeves. They're upside down. Yeah, they got sleeves you can win. And all you gotta do is join the Discord server that's linked in the description of this stream to learn how you can sign up, and, uh, yeah. Okay, so. With all that said and done, we're about to start the finals. Okay, his border was from the Tokyo Dome friendship event where you connected the different colored chains. I thought I connected all my chains. Did I not connect all my chains? Huh. Okay. Well, anyways, the finals are about to begin. So, here in just approximately one minute, we will find out who is the better duelist. Pleiades with his Vanquish Soul deck, Milk Bubble Tea with the... Well, I say that these are like the decks they're using, but you know, it could be anything, huh? I'm psyched to duel with you. I'm psyched to watch. Also, Rixia and Foster Cubed are going to be dueling for third place. Because, as you can see in the prizes, it does technically matter. There are slight differences in prizes from like third to fourth place in these tournaments. So, battle for the bronze, if you will. Their match is starting, and we will watch it if, um, if this match ends quickly enough. Yeah, this is the prizing, I believe. This should be showing on screen right now, right? Yeah. So third and fourth place do get different stuff. Oh, our match is beginning. Here we go, guys. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready? All right, press one for Pleiades. Press two for Milk Bubble Tea. Press three to wish a GG's to both players because we're just here for some good dueling action. Here we go. Do I know about how many days until the prizes arrive? I'm not sure. Um... That's a good question, actually. You can probably ask in the Discord. I'm not sure how long it actually takes for them to ship out the prizes. I'm not involved in that particular part of the process. But yeah, here we go. Good luck to both duelists. Looks like we're starting off with Pleiades. So, they start with Stake Your Soul, which we have not actually seen played a whole bunch, at least in their run so far. It's going to get hit by Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, though. So they decide to chain Dimension Shifter. They gotta chain it now because the moment that Stake Your Soul is in their graveyard, Dimension Shifter won't be able to be used anymore. Gotta have no cards in the grave. For what it's worth, Dimension Shifter wouldn't have stopped Ash Blossom anyway, so no big losses there. Then Pleiades follows up with Reinforcement of the Army. So this is actually an interesting play. I think that Stake Your Soul might have been meant to just bait out Ash Blossom, and if that was the case, then it did work. So now, they can summon Vanquisol Rosin, activates effect to search, gets hit with infinite impermanence. Is there a Vanquisol monster in the hand to swap out with? There is! Heavy Borger! So, by chaining Heavy Borger's effect to infinite impermanence, it's gonna get Rosin off the field, Heavy Borger taking its place, and now, since Rosin's no longer face up on the field, infinite impermanence will not be negating its effect and it is going to get to search. It's like we're playing a tag battle fighting game or something. Next, Vanquish Soul Heavy Borger is using its effect to draw one card. Reveals Dr. Mad Love, gets a draw, and now since we're underneath Dimension Shifter, it might be best to just leave Heavy Borger in the field and not make Vanquish Soul or Rock of the Vanquisher. And that would be totally viable, but it all depends. Like, does Pleiades have anything that they can set to feel safe in the situation? Maybe Snow Devil. I don't think that they're playing Dust Devil, or at least I haven't seen it today. They decide to go for the Link instead. Not entirely ill-advised. Just one more thing to consider. 
Rock of the Vanquisher is a pretty good card here, though, because it means that during the next turn, it can summon out a monster even in Milk Bubble T's turn. And here, it lets them summon Dr. Mad Love from the hand, use its effect, search a Vanquish Soul spell or trap card, most likely Snow Devil. Dust Devil. Maybe they already have Snow Devil in the hand. Maybe they can't use Snow Devil and they think that Dust Devil would be better. Either way, they're sending a card face down, which we can safely assume is Dust Devil. It sort of functions like a Book of Moon-esque, Book of Eclipse-esque card. And they pass. Now it's Milk Bubble Tea's turn, and they're underneath the effects of Dimension Shifter, so this gets a lot scarier. They start off with Unexpected Die. Does this mean we can expect Rika Sun Avalon again? I think that's what the... Yeah, we saw that earlier. Yeah, Milk Bubble Tea earlier won with Rika Sun Avalon, so I'm assuming that's what they're playing here. Seems to be the case. They get Sunseed Genius Loki. Or is it Losi? Lo probably Loki, huh? No, we're not getting into card pronunciations. Never mind, I'm focusing on the duel. Okay, so Rock of the Vanquisher gets activated to summon a Vanquish Soul monster from the hand. They go straight for Vanquish Soul Rosin. Rosin's going to use its effect. And add a Vanquish Soul monster from the deck to the hand. Once again. This is especially scary for Milk Bubble Tea because... Rosin might also be electing to use its effect and destroy all the cards in its column. A little scary, though, because that means Rock the Vanquisher would have to perish along with it. So I'm not so sure that this was the intention. If I had to guess, I guess Rosin could also go in the column right over here. And that would just prevent any Link monsters from appearing in general. But... We're not going to judge Pleiades' moves too well because they're the one in the finals, not us. So, Rosin does reveal a fire in the dark, destroys everything in the column, Sunsea Genius gets banished, and... Still Milk Bubble Tea's turn. I buy that, Livius. There's probably a reason not to wait for the Link Summon. Okay, so there is a bit of an extender here. Rika Princess can summon to the field just for free, easy, just like that. However, it does mean that only plant monsters can be summoned while it's in the field. Not a big deal. I imagine there's plenty of plants to be had here. They make Sun Avalon Dryas. So this is... Hmm. Sticky situation for Milk Bubble Tea. They didn't get to make Dryas with Loki, so they don't get to add the Speller Trap. And... Ah, oh, man. Since all these cards are banished, cards like Rika Princess can't even use their negation from the graveyard. And they didn't hard draw like something like Rika Con Con, so... Hmm. Ah, okay. I see the plan here. So, Dryas is going to attack Dr. Madlove, take 2,000 damage, but its effect will let them regain that damage, and then summon a monster from the extra deck. So they get Sunvine Healer, and they'll gain some more life points. And we proceed to main phase two, where we'll be linking these two monsters off for Aroma Seraphy Jasmine. Hmm... Okay, so we actually have not normal summoned yet. So Milk Bubble Tea decides to normal summon Max C. And Aroma Seraphy Jasmine can actually tribute this Max C and summon a plant from the deck. Always incredible to watch these players manage to still kind of get their strategy going even underneath cards like Dimension Shifter that seems so, you know, oppressively powerful. Still, it's going to be tricky. Like, just all these cards getting banished as the combo goes on could really add up. And, oh, okay. Vanquish Soul Heavy Borger activates in the hand, returns Dr. Madlove, summons itself instead. Milk Bubble Tea does not give up. 
Tributes Maxi to use Aroma Sacred Jasmine's effect. Gets hit by Ash Blossom. Oh, golly, that really bites. And then Heavy Borger is going to also use its effect. Draw a card. Not looking great for Milk Bubble Tea. At least not in this game. However, it's only game one of the finals. It's not over yet. Even this game's not over yet, technically. So, you never quite know how things will turn around. How they'll shake out. Okay, so, Dimension Shifter is done, which means that Max Z can at least be used safely. Milk Bubble Tea decides to just throw it out in the standby phase. That way, you're not turning on any um, Triple Tactics talent from your opponent, right? It's only if your opponent used the effect in the main phase. So, this just means, though, that Pleiades might not want to special summon, and that's okay. But they elect to anyway. I think that's still fine. I mean, the idea is probably to be able to normal summon Rosin now. Get an additional search. And with Heavy Borger's burn effect... Let me see, how much damage is this going to be? I see. I see the plan here. So, Rosin searches for Caesar Valius, and now Rosin can use its effect, presumably, to destroy all the cards in the column. That is exactly what they do. Reveals fire. Reveals dark. Boom. They don't even actually have to special summon again. They can attack with all three of these monsters, and then Heavy Borger will just be able to deal 1500 damage, and that'll be that. At least for this first game. And battle phase. Rosin attacks. Nothing so far. Border attacks. Nothing so far. And the final attack for exact game. 2,500 with the second Heavy Borger. Game one goes to Pleiades against Milk Bubble Tea. That was only game one, though. This is the best two out of three, so they are going to be playing again very shortly. Normally, I would hop in uh, Rixia and Foster Cube's game, but since we're trying to catch all the finals, I don't want to miss any of the juicy action. If you, I guess, defeat your opponent with a fighting game deck and it's, like, exact game, is that, like, a perfect? Isn't that what they call that in, like, Street Fighter? Like, a perfect? Because it also assumes you don't take any damage. Okay. So, game two. Milk Bubble Tea. Versus. Pleiades. Son Goku is correct. If Rika Kon Kon shows up, this will suddenly be a much more difficult duel. For Vanquistle, that is. But that's great if you're uh, on the plant side of the equation. Flawless victory. Alright, game two. So, we might expect to see a bit of a different game here. Milk Bubble Tea is going first. I really love the Ice Dual Field. One of my favorite of the kind of more generic dual fields that they've added to the game. It doesn't have any particular archetype theme. Okay, so Rika Glamour goes off without a hitch as Rika Princess to hand. Rika Princess activates its effect, summons itself. Normal summons Rika Petal, and Rika Petal is going to grab a Rika monster. It's Madon the Rika Fairy. Gonna use it. Tributes off Rika Princess. That's deadly. Now Princess is actually live in the graveyard to negate a card as well. A monster effect, that is. So, this is gonna be a frightening one, frankly. I have played against the Rika Plant Sun Avalon deck with Vanquish Soul a fair bit, and Pleiades going first uh, was a big boon, we'll say. Going second against this deck 
a little bit of a different story. Okay, Therian Lily Boria. It's kind of crazy to think that there haven't even been any hand traps activated, not even an imperm. So, Pleiades might not have a really great hand available to them. And even if they had a Nibiru... Well, if they had a Nibiru, there are some windows of time they can activate it. But this deck, this is a hard deck to stop. Even if it gets nibiru That said, though, um, right now, Rika Princess is not live because there's not a Rika monster in the field. I believe that's how that works. Let's double check just to make sure. Yeah, they have to control a Rika monster to be able to negate a monster effect. So, there's like a chance that a Nibiru could drop here and change the game, but I haven't seen it so far. So, Sun Avalon Dryas goes ahead and gets Sunvine Sewing. Sunvine Sewing summons from deck Sunseed Twin. Oh man. This seems really terrifying to face with no hand traps just to deal with any of it. Early plant lock, so we won't be seeing King Regulus. Yeah. I guess that's one relaxing thing. Some bit of reassurance in a cold, wintry... Uh, the cold, wintry situation that is this dual field. Wait, Rixie is in chat? Hey, Rixie, how's it going? I didn't... Are you? Is your... Did the, is the third place match over? Or you just got a chance to kind of pop in chat and say hi. I'm assuming it's the same, Brixia. I would hope, but... Jeez, this is tense. <laughs> I just read the... Brixia's like, I'm fine, just waiting for his turn to end. Uh, yeah, might as well hop in chat. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I know the feeling. Uh, okay, so. I guess that's kind of what we're doing here. Just watching these Sun Avalon monsters amass from the extra deck. I, so. Is there a particular point to use? Um, wait a second. Let's just do again. Okay, this can't. I feel like this would be the point to Nibiru, right? Because the moment that they get a Rika monster on the field, it's now like... Princess is live in the grave again. That's my understanding. Someone can inform me if, um... <laughs> Someone can inform me if that's wrong. Okay, Con Con drops. Oh man, I'm sure you're Rose Whip. Your opponent can activate, only activate one spell or trap each turn. Not actually the worst thing for Vanquish Soul, per se, but. Still. Alright, so Rika Fairy, Snowdrop is making everything level 8. Time to overlay. The Overlay Network summons out to Teardrop the Rika Queen. How does Rika FTK? So, by FTK, we're not really talking, you know, that they'll win on the first turn, but that they can set up a board that can effectively do that. Insofar as the opponent won't be getting to do very much. Oh, Bestial Magnemite? That is oftentimes played in Vanquish Soul decks. I've gone back and forth between the Bissial Engine and my own personally. So, Magnemite's going to target Bengal Lancer. And presumably prevent it from summoning from the grave. Okay, it does. That's actually really good because Bengal Lancer, it has this like... Yeah, this bounce disruption. I'm not super familiar with all the plant cards, you'll have to forgive me. 
And Magnemut makes its way to the field. And it tries to search. But Rika Princess is going to tribute it off and negate that search effect. So, uh, no grabbing any more Bestials or perhaps grabbing a Caesar Valius. Teardrop gains a little bit of attack. Very temporary thing. Okay. So, it's Pleiades' turn. What will they have in store for us? This could be a worse field to deal with, I'll say that much. But Rika Con Con is really very terrifying. And I'm assuming Rika Sheet's face down somewhere. Right? Did we see that get sent? I wasn't... Might have missed it. Yeah, okay. She did get set. Okay. So. Starts off with Venkrasil Rosin. As proven by Europeans, nobody except plant players actually know what plants are doing. Relatable. So I'm guessing Rosin's really wanting to uh, try to get rid of this Nichiria Rose Whip. That said, though, not going to be easy because if Teardrop chains here and tributes off Rosin, then there won't be a column for it to destroy all the monsters in. So I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. Hmm. Okay, doesn't happen. Maybe they didn't want the bounce to happen, like where, you know, Nankrasol can dodge it. But still, that would mean that um, the column stuff wouldn't happen. Like, the column... You get what I'm saying. Listen, I'm just watching the duel, okay? Alright, so Vanquishsoul Xiaolong gets to be summoned because some cards are revealed for Vanquishsoul effects. Okay, so, uh, Stake Your Soul can be activated. I'm assuming there's another Speller Trap that also is in the hand that maybe wanted to be activated, and that's why, um, Rosin went after Nishiria Rose Whip? Who's to say? Anyway, so Stake Your Soul revealed Heavy Borger, which means that we're gonna be summoning Vanquish Soul Dr. Mad Love from deck. And there she is, Dr. Mad Love's here. Adds a Vanquish Soul Speller Trap. Or it would, but it gets hit with Infinite Impermanence. That might not necessarily stick, though. We'll see. We know that Vanquish Soul Heavy Borger is in the hand. So, if Pleiades wants to, they can pretty much make this Infinite Impermanence null and void. Okay. So, Vanquishsoul Heavy Borger activates, and it's going to try to bounce Dr. Madlove. Rika Sheet gets chained, tributes off Rosin to swipe away Dr. Madlove. Does this exchange work? Okay, well, Vanquishsoul Caesar Valius also chains, and it's going to scoop up Dr. Madlove in its place. And now Teardrop is activating, and we're distributing the whole thing. This is an odd exchange for me, because... That means that Dr. Madlove is still going to actually get to search, it's just going to be off the field. And... In addition to that, when it searches, it's going to get Snow Devil... Which will be live, because we know that there's an Earth and a Dark monster in the hand. And a Fire monster we're aware of now. Jialong's going to change a monster's battle position. Put Sunseed Genius into attack position for a little bit of extra damage. Hmm, I don't know. I feel like this exchange actually just favored Pleiades. Am I missing something, though? Like, I don't play plants, so I'm a little less informed. So, now that we know Kurikara is in the hand, too, this might just be an OTK. Well, not an OTK. Oh, yeah, because we can't summon out, um, 
Borger or a Caesar anymore. They both use their effects. So it's just going to get tributed for Kurikara. Who is at 3,000. So this isn't game or anything yet. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, okay, so I was right, yeah. I was like... It didn't feel like a favorable exchange. Yeah, I think that, that Raisin shouldn't have been allowed to resolve. If that was the... Mm -hmm, well, I'm not going to pretend to know better than, than Milk Bubble Tea. That's the player in the finals, not me. And I have no clue how to pilot plants, so... I always will kind of assume there might have something else going on. Oh, Milk Bubble Tea's in chat. That was probably a misplay. Understandable. I was, yeah, that was the main thing I was kind of wondering about was why Rosin got to work. That's my main thing. But it's still main phase one. Neither of the monsters in hand can summon out. So Jialong's use its effect. We know the last card was just... It was... Okay, continue. But continue can't... Oh! Wait. I see now. Okay. Vanquish will continue. Get the monster back. And then, um... Make Rock of the Vanquisher special summon out Caesar Valius. That should be enough. Should be enough to win. Or not? Did I miss something? Hmm. Wait, was there like a lock-in or... Oh, you're right. That'd be 200 off. You're totally right. Totally missed that. Good call, good call. So maybe they just didn't want to... Still, though. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, but I guess it would still put them in range of, like, it puts the opponent in range of um, losing to Heavy Borger, so maybe that'd be, like, a... I don't know. Nature rose ups have got me in the last match, as Rixia said. So, we've got Heavy Burger, and we know that there is a Earth and a Fire, so, yeah. Okay. 1,500. In phase. If, it, if this gets Rose Whip, that's really mean. Okay, it gets, in, gets, okay, it gets Petal, so, it, so Petal can't come back and start and play next turn. I was thinking that um, Kiri Kara might get Rose Whip. That'd be rude, but... Petal, probably actually the smarter pick. Okay, so... Heavy Burger puts this game on a timer, because... 1500 means Milk Bolt, he has 200 left, and... Now... This game has to end on this turn. Or at least, Heavy Burger has to get off the field. When completely out of circulation. It's not just a matter of this Heavy Burger getting off the field. It can always be searched again. Forgot they started the turn with Petal. Yeah, it, it, a lot of stuff had happened. Okay, so this seems like this is Pleiades' game to lose. Oh, yeah, they do run Pluton. Always kind of fun to see. And now Caesar Valius hits the board. I think that's going to be it. Rosin hits. And this is going to look like a uh, a win for Vanquish Souls today. Can't say I expected to see it. I really can't say I expected to see it. Alright. Well. That's it. That's the finals. 
congratulations to Pleiades for defeating Milk Bubble Tea in the finals. Well played by both players. Congratulations. Pleiades is the winner. Good stuff. Well played. And that means that Vanquish Soul have actually managed to take a W in one of the Master Duel Challenger Cups. Just a reminder to you guys, here are some of the awesome prizes that these players will be winning. If you play in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cups and you get first place, Pleiades is going to be walking away with a Rescue Rabbit plush. Not this particular one, Konami's going to send them their own. A Master Duel hoodie like mine. I kind of line it up with like the thing on the screen. It's like almost the same place. As well as some really beautiful white and black Master Duel sleeves. Physical, real life ones. Because I got the boxes right here. Here, I'll show you. Look like that. But Milk Bubble Tea got second place, which means that they're also going to be getting Rescue Rabbit plush. Some white and black sleeves, and even our third and fourth place players, that was Rixia and Foster Cubed, are going to get some sleeves as well. So, all in all, a really fun Master Duel Challenger Cup this weekend. If you guys are interested in playing in any of these, remember that you can enter just by clicking the Discord link down in the description. That's where they have the schedule for all the different ones they're going to be hosting. Konami is doing these on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays all hosted and streamed by your favorite content creators. For instance, tomorrow I think it's going to be run by Kriparian. Cool. Fun. Good stuff. So, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I enjoyed spending this Saturday afternoon with you watching some awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! And the finals wasn't Snake Eyes at all. It was Rika Sanivalon versus Vanquish Souls. So, I think that's overall a net win. Okay. Gonna see you guys in the next one.